they usually do, and they fly as long as there is daylight. So, so uh, yeah. So, so and, and fuel is no big problem because that damn thing can, can, especially with not that much load on it, can probably stay in the air for 12 hours easily. So I, I was just amazed. Yeah. And also they have to have some idiot in the spotter plane that have to tell them in what order to go in because you can have like five or six airplanes and five or six helicopters and a spotter plane and then some other police helicopters and keep all the general aviation out of the area and stuff so there's a lot of things going on. Whew. Well in my town, school started just uh, not that long ago yeah. and my town decided well this is a good time to tear up and resurface the entire Main Street of town. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> it's always yeah. good time. They had all that yeah. time during COVID. And yep. Summer break. Oh. Yeah. The wonders of city planning. <laughs> well, they have to plan all the catastrophes they're going to do. So, yeah. Turn that off. Turn that on. Turn that off. I'm good here. Here we go. Alright, boom. I really, yeah, I just, I made sure I was all prepped up and ready to go for mine before I hopped on the Johns and just did a quick reboot. Looks pretty good. Things look good here. select there's there oh, 17 months there Gatano oh my gosh holy schmollies there's no drawing Casey that's tomorrow night <laughs> Casey always pressing that drawing button there oh I didn't check one thing uh oh uh oh Oh, thank God it worked. Shout outs. <laughs> I oh. didn't check the channel shout outs, you know. Oh. Did you update the title? What's that? Yeah, I was going to say, no. The title of the show. What's up there, Tom? What's up, Casey? Hey, lurk away, man. Time flies, Katana, but it's all good. It's all good. Oh, 2018. I mean, not partner affiliate. Sorry about that. And I missed my cue because of that. Big giveaway tomorrow night. We're doing our first GameScape 3D STL printer file giveaway. can barely hear you, Scott. Really? Uh, Jay. All right, hold on. Let's... There's that's a little better. How about, how about now? Better. Better, better, better? No, it's still just a little bit low.
How about now? Yeah, that's better? Yeah. All right. So, it, no, so no, I have to my input value. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's, uh, yeah, uh, it's Mark, Mark Spear is saying that you are a little quiet, Anna. Oh, yeah, I know. My mic is kind of terrible, so there we go. I have to put it. Good evening, online. everyone. Let's see. We got, uh, we'll come on, like, we'll come on uh, two minutes early tonight. But thanks a lot for the raid, uh, John at Blue Box. And uh, Gatano and uh, Nash for a long time. I'll pop them up as well. I'll pop them all up. But good. So um, it's always quiet compared to the music. And then, um, gosh, you guys are nitpicking, Tim. <laughs> all right. Whew. I made it. So um, great topic tonight. Great, great topic tonight. Now here's. The so everyone who's watching, who's new, hasn't seen it, the next screen, next screen, these are all the highlighted streams with the times are on Eastern time. Take a look if there's something interested. Register and sign up to watch. We got a ton of stuff each day. Look, the Ever Mysterious Tim is the first uh, highlight stream Saturday morning. What could be better than breakfast with Tim and his barbarians? Leonard's on the final show, the Ask the Experts, Gavin. Finish things up. Am I low now without the music? Please tell me that I'm not low. Not low. Not for us, but not it might for, be right. different if I'm low the, in, in Twitch, just tell me, okay? Please let me know. Um, sounds okay. Thanks, Pu Thanks, Puppet Josh. Thank you very much. About righty goodness. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming on tonight. It's going to be an awesome discussion. Uh, we have our normal cast this is like our normal crew now we got yeah Greyhawk in mike our bridges. abnormal cast. <laughs> <laughs> we got greyhawk mike bridges on howdy we got the great anna meyer on hey. what could be better for this discussion than Leamond himself yes on exactly. Leonard Lakafka. imagine that we actually have a, someone we're going to talk about tonight in game is on and if you've never ever downloaded an earth journal before in your life you want to go and download this article from Earth Journal 10. All right. Liaman's Life by Leonard Lakafka. Uh, we'll be discussing this tonight while we have Is Leonard. Is that an autobiography? On. I'm desperately searching for my copy. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, an auto, it's an autobiography. Absolutely. Uh, yes. So uh, we're going to talk, you know, other great casters. That's how, you know, we include Liamond, uh, Because Leonard technically was never in the circle of eight, I don't think. Right, Leonard? You were in the Tower of Eight, weren't you? The, the so, defending uh, group? I, I got drafted into something or other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're going to definitely talk a lot about, about Leonard. But um, there's a lot of different spellcasters. Uh, we just wanted to... Uh, this is just like anything else. Uh, we're probably not going to get to all of them. So yeah. we're going to try and stick around the circle of eight and functions of ancillary. Of yeah. And some throwing in here and there. Like I know there's one that Mike really has developed out of all. Right. 
let's hope. Yes. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Because <clears throat> yes, uh, we'll get, we'll get to a lot of different ones. So Anna, um, what do you think when you think of the circle of eight? Not uh, any, you know, maybe I get, not mage, the, but I, get I get the, 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 the classic ones like Mordenkainen and Tensor. And, Sounds and, like a sit down orgy for eight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Glenn. Mm -hmm. We can, yeah, but it, I get the, the it, since it's, it's, I guess the, it's the kind of the iconic institution in Greyhawk gaming in a way. So much of the, the original stories and stuff surrounds it, which is weird because that's why I try to stay away from it as much as possible because it, it's like, to me, it feels a bit like if you run Star Wars, you want, you don't want to, to run your games and depict yeah. the same s stories as in the movies. I, I would stay and do other things. If if I run in mid in in, in Middle Earth, I wouldn't run the, the the story of the ring and and from the books. I would do something else. And I have a little bit of the same feel with the Circle of Eight and and the things surrounding them, so to speak. So so Tensor have been a little bit in my games, and and if Big B have kind of just been around a little bit, but but not much. So I, I try to stay away from them. But they are a huge influence culturally and 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 magically especially but but also in in, in general so to speak and they, they have a they cast a shadow both of inspiration and and doom and gloom over over the whole setting in a way so it's kind of interesting it's mm. a good part of the setting what are your, what are your are, thoughts mike i was gonna say what anna's saying um they are the measuring stick for player characters who play spellcasters yeah i know this very well because a lot of my friends who played wizards back in AD&D &D times, anytime they got anywhere near close to the Circle of Eight in the level, and we actually kept a ranking at one time. Uh, then later editions, published editions, would actually increase their level. Like, you know, Morning Cannon and yeah. Rary or whatever. They it, There was a level creep there. Yeah. And which I was great, you know, happy Whoops. for because it I kept them ahead of my players. That was a fingertip. Oh, sorry. Whoops. My apologies. That was a fingertip boop. Yep. There you go. So. so I didn't, I don't think I had a lot of interaction with the Circle of Eight in my players, but they were who were my players were always aspiring to compete with. It makes sense. I'll tell you the last time I used them, the last two times. First off, you interact with Mordenkane and, and, and uh, Eric Mona's uh, Expeditions yeah. to the Ruins of Greyhawk. So in that, you actually go into his secret lair in the uh, in the Tower of Wizardry. Um, but he, it's he, so he can browbeat you or something. Yeah. Well, he does, but he actually sends you on a mission too. But Anna, do you remember the first time you ever played with me and Tim and the whole crew yeah. during the during the first fundraiser event? And who sent <laughs> us on those missions? That mission, do you remember? Was that? Was, was that a, the Greyhawk Dragon? No, it was not the the opera. No, diva. no, it was that actually was Tensor and Mordenkainen and sent yes. us on that mission mm -hmm. during yep. the first fundraiser event we did back in uh, um, in the beginning of in February of twenty nineteen. Uh, so, and you played Mariel, who's in this discussion yep. tonight mm -hmm. too. Exactly, uh, since she's uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So we, we try she, to keep it. We try to keep it. Uh, you know, and that was that's a fun one shotter, right? That's for that was for charity. So I, I agree. I don't utilize them that much now. Yeah, Tensor is an exception because my group in my uh, campaign, the Iron Brigade, freed Tensor during expedition uh, during uh, Return of the Eight. So they have a relationship with them because of that. So um, you know, that's a, but that's a direct relationship and we can talk about that so i got i got rowdy the trader here i got uh i actually took this off my wall i got return of the eight here and um also the the greyhawk book descriptions of all the mages all right but as as um gary Hulian said let's start with liam and while we have leonard how about sure. that yeah so. definitely that's that's huh? cool, Amy, because Rari, Rari, um, everywhere I see before Rari the Trader, he's a good guy. He's like, uh, matter of fact, which is really crazy when you think about it. Everywhere I've read, uh, and especially in this book, he's matter of fact, and he's like, uh, go go with the flow. So um, definitely, uh, 
<sighs> yes, and Isle of the Ape quest too, uh, Puppet. Just group. easily could be in charge of the Circle of Eight himself. He's higher he, level than Morning Kane in that book. If he didn't, if he wasn't the one who created it. Yep. Absolutely. Very <sighs> good point. He's he's always until we're until a certain point. Um, he's like two levels, three levels ahead of Morning Kane. He's like twenty third in this book. I think Morning Kane's only twentieth in this. Yeah. So. He, he was the most powerful of all the wizards as far as levels goes. Leonard, did you find your article? No. Nope. Okay, well, well number one, one. I'm going to throw out some things people do not know, and Leonard, you can verify this. Is is Liam into 100% human? No. Correct. Ooh. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what part? I think I made him a, a quarter else, I think. Liam is one quarter elven. Okay. And That's why he lives so long and bores people to death. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know your parents, Leamond? Not off the top of my head. No. Well, your father, you said you, 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 I never met your father. So it says in here, you never met your father at all. Your mother's name was Elciadar, pure blooded Sewell. So your Sewell and Elciadar. Her dad has to be an L. Or a, a half elf. Yep. Mm -hmm. She's uh, right. the me to be a quarter elf for her to yeah, be. Yeah. So man. yes, your yeah. father was half elven. It, it, it appears. Your mother also was a worshipper of what deity? Do you remember? Hopefully Landor, but Norbo. Norebo. <laughs> yes. Scoundrel. Norebo is Oberon spelled backward. It says mother <laughs> was a thief. I mean rogue. Just in case you were unclear. <laughs> And um, you attended the Church of the Big Gamble on Lender Isle, which is right in L1. Yeah. Right? It's right in the L1 adventure. So that's pretty cool, too. Yep. Yeah, the players had a laugh riot with that. When they I, came out and they started sitting at, at tables, and then they came over and they started gambling with them. And they go, what the hell's going on? <laughs> so in your early days, Liam and... What other wizards did you interact with that you recall? I don't remember who I wrote was my mentor. Um, see if I, can I interfaced with, with uh, Lendor himself, of course. Okay. There's a portion of that story that has been interfacing with him. Yes, We're off did. somewhere. You studied for there. A number of years, I think. Ten. More importantly, age aspect. Of, uh, you found refresh at, at age ten. Yeah. Well, that's why you have to be a quarter elf. You know, you can't, can't miss these ten years old. That either. Yeah, it takes so long to to accomplish it. So you have to. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, let's see. Did Liam ever go to Castle Greyhawk? Uh, Gary Julian wants to know. Did you ever go to Castle Greyhawk? Greyhawk ruins. I uh, mm -hmm. It depends on what they wrote about me. You know. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, I have, have heard a number of times that they've written about what I've done and where I've gone, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the thing I wrote. There you go. Earth Journal 10, page 78. Download it right now on Greyhawk Online. Okay, I should have linked it. There you go. You can download this for free right now, and then you can read on Earth Journal 10 is one of the best of the first 20 Earth Journals. It's fantastic. Absolutely yep. fantastic Earth Journal. I think it has especially Priest of Tritharian and the Free City of Harby in it. So uh, I think it's a it's a great Earth Journal. Um, okay, let's see what else. I don't want to know why Lehman has the theme of spells he does. You know, extra dimensional stuff. Good question. Mm -hmm. Like Lehman's Lehman's spell repertoire. What's where did you come up with the theme for that? Is there a reason behind that? Um. Protection and comfort are my two cornerstones. So that's why you have uh, Lehman's uh, Tiny Hut, you have Lehman's Secure Shelter, you have Lehman's is it chest Liam. that you hide off, it goes off into the ether or the astral. So, um, so what I've done. Go away and save it and, and have it protected as much as you can. Yeah. At the end. I have compiled, and this is 1E2E, -E, everyone, every spell that we've ever found with a named mage on it from okay. this for this setting. So here we go. Let's go to Leonard's list. There's, there's your article. 
All right. And okay, there's Bigby, Drawmage, Liaman, Liaman's Trap, second level, Liaman's Tiny Hut, third level, Liaman's Secure Shelter in Arch Arcana, fourth level, Liaman's Lamentable Belabberment, which you said I didn't write. Gary wrote that one at fifth level, Liaman's <laughs> Hidden Lodge, that's fifth level player's option book, and Liaman's oh Secret God. Chest, you definitely wrote, that's player's handbook. Yeah. So you wrote three of those, right? Trap, Tiny Hut, and Secret yeah. Chest? Yep. Okay. All the original player handbook so, ones. Well, player option one was probably just an extension of the original. Lamental, a lament, bleh, lamentable belaborment yeah. was written by Gary because he said, you know, you keep pounding the point and pounding the point. And I said, you pay me by the, by the word. What do you want? From me? <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Big, big Inside names. Me. Um, all right, let's see here if I can uh, parry through all this. Um, Rally Man kept sending you on adventures. Okay, whoever Rally Probably Man was. Uh, uh, Brad Neistel's character. Oh! See, <laughs> tell that story about the Neistels are real people, too. Oh, the Neistels are real people, yeah. Yep. Uh, Brad, Jenny, uh, and they just did. Uh, Brian Khan, which was celebrated as uh, Brian Neistel's birthday on the 15th of this month. So somewhere there, uh, there's a group on, um, on uh, Facebook yeah. that's called Brian Khan, I think. So I'm posting a few things there. Um, and then his, his older brother, Michael, uh, is I think he's I don't know if he's still in the game industry. He was for a while. I don't remember who he worked for. But he There's Nystel spells up now. Tell us who Nystel is named after in that family, or is it just that all of them? Oh, all of them. It's just for yeah. all of them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because because I I quizzed. We would often have lunch together on Wednesday. It was my day off, and he worked at a radio station. Um as a, a board operator and he would have a two and a half hour lunch break. So I would uh, join him for lunch and we would discuss things. And I said to him, you know, uh, I want to name a few spells after the, after Nystel. And so he gave the uh, Nystel's magic aura because he was a, an amateur magician sleight of hand guy. Uh -huh. So oh, okay. they said, well, what, what various things can we do? And he said, well, relative to the game, it would be something that appears to be magic, but it isn't. So I, I, he gave me the idea and I wrote the spell because that was not his forte. Uh, writing the stuff up was not his forte. Do you remember what you, you did you write? Um... Um, the, the Nistel spell that everyone knows is that are you saying that that's the spell you wrote, wrote the Nistel spell? Well, there's more than isn't there more than one name after Nistel? Yeah, oh, yeah, look at this list yeah. Nistel's Magic R we're talking about, right? You wrote Nistel's Magic R. Oh, yeah, of course. Wow, that's news. That yeah, is awesome. An it's an iconic spell, it's an iconic yeah. spell. Yeah, and then crazy. most of these are most of these are in the, the Jim Ward book. As you can see, they're all great. GR2 is Greyhawk Adventures, and we had Jim on. All the rest of the nice little spells are in Greyhawk Adventures, except yeah, for Nistel. I'm not going to take credit for all of those. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm sorry, it switched. Uh, so okay. that's the only one. I don't think, yeah, all, all the other ones, Len, I don't, let me go back to it and I'll hold it there for you and, and blow it up a little bit. But wow, uh, that is news. That you wrote uh, Nistel's Magic Aura. That is uh, like one of the most iconic spells that uh, everyone knows. So uh, I wrote a lot of spells. I that mean, is awesome. Um, there we go. Okay. But see, I never saved my notes, my my submissions to the point of I think I've written this and I think I've written that, but I can't prove it because I don't have the paperwork that I sent in to Garrett. Um, okay. So, 
you know, it, it's it's tough to call. I think I know things that I wrote, but I'm not 100% positive, and I certainly can't prove it, which is the other issue, I suppose. I wrote quite a few for um, Unearthed Arcana because, as I said to you once before, he had 29 spells here and 33 spells there. And I said, don't you think it should come out an even number? So I wrote enough spells to make them all come out even. But as to, if I look at the list, I might be able to, well, I'll, I'll look at the list. Yeah, just uh, you know, as, as we're talking, do a quick scan through. You never know. Like I said, I have these. These are compiled because um, uh, we have what's called a Greyhawk Mage, it's a specialist mage, and they actually will study one of the great spellcasters underneath. Alan's char one character, uh, D. Vic Strollen, who's playing in the group we're playing now on Thursday night, is a Greyhawk Mage of Nystol because she loves doing Nystal's Blazing Beam and all those spells against Undead. So um, that's her main That's her main uh, forte. But she can use other ones too, but it's kind of like a, a super specialist. Uh, and they, they try and use named spells over Fireball. and It's kind of a roleplay type of, of mage, but it's really cool. So, lender question okay? Sure, sure. It's, uh, lender question's okay, absolutely. If you got one there, it may tie in. Sure, why not? Um Throw it up there. So you were, um, so Leomond traveled the plains a lot. You were, um, you were in a dwarven realm, it seems, and then you were in Earth, right? Yeah. Um, he just liked a, a dearth. You were in D Y R T H too. The people, yeah. and you taught, you actually taught them what in dearth? I'd have to see what it was. Higher level <laughs> spell ability, I believe, right? They, they weren't very it, good it at it. Be, yeah, that I advanced them because they were stuck at second or third, something like that. And I moved them up a level or two. All right. So, two questions for you. The first question from uh, Gatano is Did Leonard ever think magic users were hampered at low level as Gygax made the qu class weaker at first, or was he fine with it? Uh, Gygax knew that eventually the wizards would be among the most powerful. And he made them pay like hell to get there. You, you know, if you start off a, a magic user at first level, uh, his or her odds are pretty bad. Because if you're in some kind of marching order, no matter what the marching order is, if somebody's arrayed along the side of the road and decides to fire arrows at you, your mage could be the, the lucky target. And boom, there you go. Right. <laughs> yep. Well, but then that depends on where you... where. Death is the other important piece of the equation. I think you're safe all the way down to minus three. And only at minus four, and for really a rotten constitution, you have a chance of dying. Well, it's a good thing that I like that you do negatives as well. Um, the other question was, and it's it's off of that a little bit. Um, uh, it says, Lender was an archmage in the 83 box set. When did he become a deity? I don't think I... I didn't know I became a deity. I, Le, no, I, Lendor. 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 Yeah. Oh. Well, Lendor, Lendor is the fa father-mother of the entire pantheon. So, so him saying he's just a, an archmage in the box set is actually incorrect, right? It was you. Oh yeah, yeah, he's a god. He's yeah, a great god. So it yeah. actually is an and, error uh, in the eighty-three. Yeah, Luigi and Cord are the yeah the three greater gods. That's well, because all the damn barbarians, uh, uh, Frost and the the, the crusty and the, whatever the hell the hell the hell. <laughs> Um, the Snow Barbarians, the Frost Barbarians, and whatever the other one. Many of them pray to Cord or Lurg, one of those two. Uh, their reminiscences of the gods that um, pass through on the Sewell migration. More of the gods are available in Radic, but once you get into the Barbarian lands, it's Cord uh, and, and Lurg are the two. And worship the most. So, he was a god all along, and that's you're saying. Oh yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Note that. Note that there, Josh. Yeah. That uh, he says it's a. He's a. Um, it's a mistake in the '83 box set, which I wouldn't doubt it. Because uh, a let, mistake let, that's been retrofitted somehow to actually make sense. That it's just two separate people. Yep. It's a guy. It's a god and a wizard. Yeah. People. Once Gary lost the company, other people started writing stuff. And that led to the Greyhawk Wars and all of that other, other <laughs> stuff where the, supposedly the elves invaded the island and all that. I'm sure that. So we got Len for about he, four more minutes. Go ahead, Mike. Yep. I'm sorry. Yep, he does. All right. Uh, question. Did you did uh, uh, Liam ever travel to other continents on Earth besides the Flanace? And I didn't see that. In the uh, it seems to me the answer is yes. I think there was okay. one episode where we went beyond the sea of dust in the other direction. Great. Now, I thought that Menser did that, didn't he? Didn't Frank Menser design? There's a, a couple different designs. I, I would know more on that than, and, than I would um, on who did, who did that, that, that I design. I thought Gary gave Frank that part of the planet to work on. Well, yeah, the the um, the one that is called what was it? It's called yeah, Imperia Aquaria. Aquaria. Yeah, different. I think it was called Aquaria originally, and then Frank called it Imperia later on. I think or yeah. Frank tried to do a a, a Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say in the ballpark yep. of three or four years ago. It was only, yeah, it's only a couple of years it, ago, I think. Yeah, I, I was, me it, and Darlene really were... really because he had yeah. a mm -hmm. gigantic number in mind as to how much money he wanted. Yep, that was, yeah, it was kind of unlucky uh, circumstances a little bit. But that's all right. I, I did something for him. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I started mapping both me and Darlene. Right, and, and he paid me $1,400 for it, so, you know, <laughs> Whoa. So, so Len, we got you for a couple more minutes here. Um, Gary Hulian asked, besides Liam, and have you did you make any other characters we may know the name of? I so, don't think so. Okay, so uh, I had a ranger that got pretty far, but I don't remember what I named him. Okay, but he got up to tenth or eleventh level. Uh, okay, I enjoyed playing the ranger significantly. I, that was a lot of fun to play. Yeah, it sounds like Liam went to Aquaria Puppet. That's a cool thing. And uh, now we also know that Len himself created a, a, an iconic spell that we did not know. You know what? I, I think down the road we're going to have a show with Len where we're going to we're going to maybe say, hey, you know, there's stuff in the player's handbook and the Dungeon Master's Guide that Len did that no one knows. I mean, whole paragraphs, right? Yes. The, the, yeah, that's and, true. And spells and Art Arcana and stuff. After, after I sent the books back or sent comments on the books back because we had folders that were double spaced and there was like nine folders for the player's handbook and 13 or 14 folders for the dungeon master's guide so after it was all submitted and they started doing the final manuscript i took all of that and threw it away now hindsight says i should have kept it because i had my notes on what I did in places where I entered stuff. And I was doing that all the way back to original D&D. &D. When I would run into, in, in OD&D, &D, every week you ran into something that the rules really didn't cover. They yeah. just didn't. So you had to, I would write it up for the players in the sense of, well, when this comes up again, this is my current thinking. But I would always carbon Gary, literally carbon Gary. Uh, on what I did, and some of that wandered into the various places. Last question: Did you create the adventure hook for the lost passage of the Soulweed? Since you were so big on the Soulweed's migrations and getting out to under I was that you? Uh, uh, yes, I did. I did that with with Wilson. I think. Let's there you go. How... There you go, Gary. That's another big revelation. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. Well, I worked with him on that. I went in to fit my, I had a series of binders that were uh, available in the Sewell Empire. And as they migrated, some of those binders went off into the continent. 
And we had a campaign in which they were trying to find as many of the binders as they could. I think there were seven. I have that somewhere. You have the know, notes? But it, it's listed in, in the, um, when, you, when you look at Steve, at Steve Wilson? Yeah. yeah. Steve Wilson. When you look at Steve Wilson's stuff, there's stuff in there that's annotated from me that we wrote my timeline into his timeline. And it'll mention binders. I think it does. Fairly sure. Gary's complimenting you on chat. It's a great legend, Len, inspired thousands of DMs and ideas. So oh. kudos. We found out two unbelievable things today. That no one, I don't think anyone knew till you, you uh, till this point. Okay. What do you think they were binding? <laughs> uh, What's the binder? Who or for? what was being bound by the binder? Yeah, that's uh, that's the five million dollar question. Yes. Or do you know? Oh, I can know? tell you. It's the, it's uh, uh, Major Gene. Okay. Oh. A name Gene bound seven of them and uh, through the head Gene of uh, whoever the hell that was. Probably 16, 18 hit dice, something like that. The, the the seven binders bound these various genies that had specialization areas similar to what you did in uh, uh, L2, uh, in uh, addition to. Right. We started doing specialty mages. Mm -hmm. so apparently, there were some specialty uh, uh, gene, a uh, gen, 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 specialty gen, gen as well. Not the ones that are written up in the book, you know, the ones that was at six and dice or something like that. Like the Deo. Or These Freets. are the ones that are beyond those guys. Right. Not the Jans, the true. Yeah. Okay. The graders. Well, that's great. I have to go. Len, see you Sunday if you can come on, I, right? I will Thank look you so much. the stuff yeah. on the binders and see what I can Archer find. and Deathmaster awesome. amongst the discussion Sunday night. So, okay. Okay. Have a good one. See ya. I'll be it. I'll be it. See ya. I'll be it. See Oh my gosh, that's unbelievable. Yep, see, now we got lots of interesting stuff today. Wow. Well, thank Statler's nice. Thank you so very much for that nice compliment. Really appreciate it. That is amazing. I, I, I'm, I don't know which one I'm more blown away with. The, the Passage of Slurritan is Leonard's or Nistel's Magic R is Leonard's. I mean, my gosh. Mm -hmm. That's, yep. that's, I say Nistel, not Nistel. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, we learned, we learned Jim Ward is is the original Monty Hall DM a couple weeks ago, and Gary called right. him that, and that mm -hmm. and it stuck in 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 lingo, and now we learned that stuff after, and we've had Leonard on, I've had Leonard on for what eighteen months on and off, and we just yeah. found it out. Well, yeah, we have had him for numerous shows now. So yeah, yeah. Right. wow, right. so yeah, well, there'll be, um, D yeah, exactly. That <laughs> that is just that's so amazing. Weird. Uh, and don't forget, Leonard's going to be one of the SD experts during Grey, uh, Virtual Grailcon, the last show, and you can ask away all sorts of things. It's going to be that's going to be a fantastic wrap up. So uh, yeah, he did he did there, uh, Gitano. He did re write some up. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We got to figure out how to, where to start. So we'll do the normal thing that Anna, Mike, and I do, and we'll bounce around between mages. We'll talk about them. Whatever details we have, whatever, if you want to know stats. And then we'll throw one out, audience. We'll talk about them. Try and keep, guys, keep it in the realm of the circle for the most part. But you can go offbeat. But uh, Gary put like 30 of them in, in cannon fire and my head exploded. Damn. Like Zane. 30? X A, I mean, oh my well, God. Well, you have IUs. Yeah. yeah, IUs have a whole bunch oh of Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, like like too. Null and Jumper and things yeah. like that. We don't too. have time for yeah. Bonehart. Yeah, we're, not, yeah. We're, we're talking, we're talking, we'll, we'll, we'll get there though. All right, why isn't yeah. this scrolling? This should have been scrolling. And now we have, um, we still, the coast have made Tasha or Igvil. Well, I have Igvil in here. Yeah, yeah, there I is have, that. I have Igvil in here. I do because yep. I love Igvil. Um, <laughs> I've always loved Igvil since day and one and that's the so. thing as a dm you can love all the monsters you want yeah so all right well uh, uh statler we're gonna get uh there, there are things brewing with len that are amazing and that's all i'm gonna say all right amazing stuff that's gonna be coming with len um anna and i are privy there you go mm -hmm. so that's yep. all i'll say all right um <laughs> mike you start us off well, um, if we're not directly talking about the Circle of Eight, 
Um, one of the things I want to actually get out of the way real quick is there's some talk on, I saw this morning on Ian World about how uh, World Garth is human centric. A lot of the wizards, nearly all of the wizards that are popularly known are humans. And, you know, it's like, is that intentional by Gary? Is that because of the rules? And then, you know, I start to think to myself, what, like, non-human archmages do I know? You know, like, I can think of a few elven ones. Uh, there's, like, one non-human in the Circle of Eight, right? In the second Circle of Eight, I guess. Yes. Theod you know, Theodane. You want to talk about Theodane or Rice? Yeah, so I, that's what I'm, uh, that, that's the setup. I'm throwing out Theodane. Okay. There he is. With oh, yeah. Now you've got low again. Uh, yeah, your volume just yep. dropped. How about now? Uh, same. Elven arch. Sorry, I'm, I'm touching stuff I shouldn't be touching. How about now? I think you, your fingers are uh, doing things. Am yeah. I better now or worse? This is I, actually worse. You than... clear, but you are low. Yep. Okay. All right, keep on going, uh, yep. Mike. Uh, Theodine. Okay, arrives. so Theodine, I like the idea in principle. But what do I know about him to this day? Nothing. Yep. Outside of Return of the Eight, I think it was. Yeah. I, I, I never, I've never used Theodane. I don't know of anyone else who used Theodane. I don't even know really what his his deal is. What's his his goals, his purposes? You know, uh, He's from the Yeomanry, correct? Perfect. Okay. Well, is good. Yeah. yeah, it's auto. It goes. Zoom is auto adjusting my mic for some reason. That's what it is. Who knows? Remember, there was a Zoom update. Who knows what they did? All right. So Theoden Arisons from the Yeomanry. He's an elf. He has this game with this Greyhawk dragon where the, he lets the Greyhawk dragon hunt in a mask. I think it's a female Greyhawk dragon. Okay. Appear as him and go to uh, Circle of Eight meetings, okay. which is really flighty, and he's chaotic neutral. So it's the so first. Member, not member. It's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. It's one, of, as Carlos Lysing said, you needed to, you cleaned house and you added some three distinctive personalities, which is cool. But this one is the most enigmatic of them all. And what direction were they going? And if you want to mm. find Theodane, you look in here, okay, at the back of Return of the Eight, um, where they, uh, where Theodane Arison, Warren as Starcoat, and Alhamazad the Wise are added at the end of this adventure. Warns, if we can jump over to Warns, sure. Kind of that was a um, organic addition. You know, he has a little bit of history. You know, so, you know, pulling a pre-generated character out and advancing it. It's Crook of Rel. He's one of the Crook of Rel discoverers and uh, banishers of all the demons. Morning Kane's fantastic adventure. So, Wait, Gary, you there. added Warners to the. Gary says he added Warners to the All circle. Right. That is awesome information. Okay, see? That is awesome information, Gary. So, Warners is lawful neutral as well, I believe, or true neutral? He's neutral, true neutral. He, uh, according at the time of Return of the Eight, uh, I think he's 18th or 19th. What a mess this is. My gosh, it's like almost impossible. Oh, he's 20th. Theodane is 17th. So Theodane's not even an Archmage. Ar Archmage is 18th. True. So, all right. Warren is Starcoat. Let me, uh, so, uh, very interesting. Gary, uh, since he's Isle Ape Lore, pure Gygax. Okay, there you go. So if you go to the Circle of Eight, pick pre, uh, pre Rari, pre Wars, pre tents are getting all look getting destroyed all look is still destroyed never came back we can talk about him and then you have uh Alamazad, but and then there's theodane and there's warner starcoat who has a robe of stars correct is that why he's called Warner warner starcoat i believe i think so yeah um I'll go with that. gary uh if you want to hop on you can if you want to put it in chat please do uh just uh your thought process behind but um another very a powerful wizard um, he's from, uh, where's he from? Is he from Ernst? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 There's a lot going on in the Duchy of Ernst now that you bring it up, but yeah. we can come back to that. Uh, County and Duchy, he is both. Ernst is a hotbed for magic users. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Ernst. So it seems to be that way. Uh, just on the other side of the eyebrows, correct? Um, 
Yeah. What? Uh, it's good to see that they took a character that they had built on and 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 advanced on it. And now we know that Gary, he's a court major. Birth Ernst. Thank you, Gary. That that's it. Okay. So he's a court major for both. That's pretty interesting. Um, he's no bones about hiring heroes to do his work, though he never fully explains why why uh, why he wants a certain mission accomplished. So he's he's got long range complex goals. So there you go. And, he, and if you want to find him, you can go to WG6 Isle of the Ape when he's lower level. So uh, good ones. Very good ones. He was born in 534 in Lekish in the Duchy of Ernst. It's very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, um, two good ones there. By the way, um, once again, I have pilfered, with permission, all of the great picks from Dungeon Meister Ooh. again. And there are circle of eight wizards throughout all these pictures now there are a lot of um there are a lot of their player characters within but that's a picture of tensor sitting in a chair right there okay so um uh, Dun Dun he gives me permission to do that is AKA. yeah that's drawmage drawmage standing up talking yeah, to three favorite. characters <laughs> yeah so um I have a couple pictures from a couple other artists, and I've only found the name of one of them that I want to share with you a little bit you know, later. We'll discuss it. But trying, yes, Dungeon Master stuff is incredible. Can't believe how quickly he makes all this stuff. Uh, Amy, some of these go back. This is like 2014 and 15. He does like one a week for his game, which, yeah. 3D model Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing stuff. It is probably the best uh, art artwork out there for Greyhawk, as Gary said. So, Anna, who do you want to talk about? Uh, well, um, I, one of my favorite is is the the guy with the fists, Big B. Okay. Yeah, he, he's when it comes to the magic itself, it's kind of funny and stylized and 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 kind of over the top a bit. And I think it's it's kind of it's kind of cool. I never used Big B directly, but he has a connection to to Rasfern in the Rel Devon. So so I think he was born there. And and so I, I made yeah. made a, a few connections in my Rel Devon campaign and stuff. That was a library and, and a statue in his honor and, and a few things like that that I kind of added into it. It was the the the, um, the scion and and kind of the legendary hero of the town. But but it, it's kind of I, I just like the style of it. It has the, a, a theme and and all the the the, the crunching and crun what is it like the, the the crushing blow and the whatever all the fist spells that is kind of funny because they're yeah they're, there and there are a bunch more. And by the way, so I showed the only picture I could find of Big B is this picture here with him on the on a carpet in the front. That's the only picture oh. I and that is from Greyhawk Adventures. Which That's one is Big B? Right oh, in the front oh. with the beard, I believe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no, not including the, cir the Circle of Eight pick. All right. So he's in this picture, too. Let me go to this. Morin Kanan's Fantastic Adventure. That's what that flying carpet's from. And there's also a side profile of him. Uh huh. Big B is here, and he is right in front of Rari. And uh, see, not uh, see, Drawmage is the one with the earring. He's the short, oh. almost. He's he, in between. He's the one in the middle that is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, with the beard. Yeah. So that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is he the guy in the room wearing the hood? I thought that he was the guy up front with it. Um, thank you for that, Amy. Um, but uh, that is that is a picture from the Circle of Eight. Now, mm -hmm. Bigby's spells are, are extensive if you use the resources. And I think there's a couple outside of, uh, out, outside of um, what you're used to here. Let me go to here. Bigby, here we go. They're all, look at these. There's Player's Handbook. There's a bunch. There's five in Player's Handbook, but then you have all these Greyhawk Adventures. Some of these are cool. Uh, you know, Big B's Dexter's Digits. You got Big B's Strangling Grip. We use that a lot in our campaign. Uh, Big B's Fantastic Fencers. We use that one. Uh, really, yeah, there's some neat stuff in here. So, um, <coughs> beyond. That's so a fair number. Go ahead. Penguin here. Cold Steel Penguin's asking what's the where the spells come from. Uh, I... None of us can actually say for certain because we aren't Leonard from that. <clears throat> but I would hazard to guess big early on in Greyhawk, Big B, Hornkinen, Tenzer, they had their own like armies. Little armies. And uh, in the Wild Coast or the Yaddles or wherever. I can't remember where Big B's tower was at. And he had a little army. 
I'm wondering if, like, it, the fist spell theme is an offensive deal. Like, he's from the Great Kingdom, right, yeah, Anna, definitely. you said? So, uh, well, you know, let's see, Big Big B. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he's uh, he's uh, a, a son of of, of uh, House Crandon from Real yeah. Devon. So, yep. Oh, okay. so I'm wondering if yep. the fist spells are like to aid his soldiers in combat. That might very well be. Yeah. Uh, so, also, I think Gary was a genius where he kind of they have their shtick, right? Nistel's radiance for the most part, right? Big B's hand force. Tensor's about enhancing his own combat. Right? All right. So, um, no, our Luke's about, talk about. Our Luke's about spheres for the most part. Right. Yeah, spheres of defense and uh, and different kinds. So you have you have. Uh, so Gary says Hutton a mask is an homage to TSR ALL personality Q Samantha. Wow. That goes way back. Yeah. Gary, I did yeah. uh, great information. Um, I'm assuming that. Uh, the old uh, great uh, great talk people like Brian Blumklotz would know and 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 knows uh, uh, and Eric uh, of course Eric Mona but uh, uh, great great information. All right, you want to jump to Tensor? Uh, just real quick, Let's yeah. do Tensor, it. aka Menzorin, as he's known in Paizo Hawk. Uh, oh, no, I was just going to say t Tensors. I did a uh, web comic with uh, Scott Casper. Which was about Tenzer um, and his development from his early career. And yeah, a lot of his spells were to buff himself because he's going into Castle Greyhawk all the time. And, you know, like Leonard was talking about earlier, low level wizards are, you know, Paper. easy to kill. Right. Yeah. So Tenzer's trying to be more fighter like. That's all. Here's the tensor spells really work well with multi classers in my game. And I, and, yeah. and, and, and uh, even Anna's character, Anna's Ranger Mage, Imri has yeah. tensor's steady aim, which is out of this book, Great uh, Grail Adventures, which allows it's almost fifth edition like. You can move your full movement and shoot in the same round. Yeah. So without a penalty, you can move uh, so 12 inches in our game and stuff. Yes. So, um, so you really get into a lot of cool tensor is the go-to spell for a lot of uh, multi-class fighters and multi-class ranger mages and things like that. So uh, it's pretty it's it's pretty cool. Um, tensor also is the one of the few lawful good of the famous archmage because most of them seem to lean towards neutrality in one way or the other, and he is one of the few that kind of made a, a stand morally and ethically the other ones are more flexible i guess just because they want to to bring in research and it's a magic principles and stuff like that that are more interested than politics and 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 the, the rule of the world so to speak so tensor also plays a huge role in this mm -hmm. now if you get if your if your campaign involves to the point where you can play this i highly recommend it it has the characters uh tensor jalarzi salivarian and Mariel are all in this, um, and you get to go all over the place. And it's I, a great concept. Yeah, and it, Tensor is also in the Gord books, in the first Gord book, I, or the second, I forgot which one, but, but Tensor is there. And there's a, a, a Clyde Caldwell, Clyde Caldwell um, illustration of Tensor's castle. Oh, is there? Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Now it's a mage point that is on the shore of New Deep, north of, of northeast of, of city of Greyhawk. Now, Jalarzi's tower in here, and we'll get to her. Um, mm -hmm. ten, this book gives you some unbelievable magic items. So much, I had to limit them. <laughs> no, I'm serious. What, like uh, one of them is uh, Tensor's belt of giant strength. So what I did was I see, and of course my guys bitched about it, but I don't care. Um, I said uh, it, um, it has to be a lawful good mage can mm -hmm. only wear it. So Tim's dad John, he has Abdul, who's a cleric mage. He got it. 
that eliminated me worrying about super hacking, you know, in the game. So, but there is an item that I've only ever given one out. That's a tensor mm -hmm. item out of here. And that's tensors boots of the running warrior Bill's character. Marcus has it. It's like a fifth edition effect. Just he can run his full movement and then attack, which is a huge advantage. And he's only, I'm never giving them out again. Cause wow. And, and one E two E it's really, uh, I'm bet, but he got him for free and tensor in return of the eight. So tensor after he's recovered, doesn't rejoin the circle saying I, he has too much thing, too many yeah. things to do uh, for the cause of good. And I kind of like that. I don't know what you both think of that. Well, to jump in real quick here. Uh, so Penguin was asking about Rary ant killing Tenzer and Overlook. If there was a reason other than them just stumbling upon him, which is the, you know, the more likely answer, but I think it maybe it's serendipity. There is probably no one who would have wanted to stop Rary more than Tenzer. And with Tenzer's martial spell selections and stuff, he would have been, you know, a tough opponent for Robilar as well, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, if they were going to do a hit job on someone, Tenzer would be the first to go. He's also the goody-goodiest of the Circle of Eight, yeah. so uh, we want him out of the way. He's not. He's the most lawful good. I think Jalarzi's more good than he is. Mm. Okay, that might be, yeah. Uh, that's just... But that, well, you're right. You're right. That, it, it's tough. He's a militant lawful good, right? He's like no nonsense lawful. Castle, good. He has a castle. Yeah, which yeah. means that yeah. you probably make enemies that way by taking yeah. a standpoint, stand in in world issues and stuff. You you engage yourself in politics in the way that other archmages just do magical research and try to come up with the coolest spells ever and stuff. So, yeah, it's um, and we say that don't do a lot of interaction with the circle of eight. I think Tensor is the one that would be the biggest exception, especially if you have a good line campaign and you're trying to fight major sources of evil. To bring him in as it's hiring you to do something, I see no issue with. I really don't. That's cool. Yeah. 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 I'm wondering and, if Rary going traitor was supposed to be a counterbalance for Tensor. Might be. Yeah. And now I have uh, Gary Hulian says something interesting. Both Bigby and Morning Kaiden are cra uh, Crandon Oridians with some Sue blood. That's yeah. really cool because Crandons are one of my favorite uh, noble families and something I studied a bit for, but I didn't know that Morning Kaiden, but that, that's, oh, that's awesome. Hmm. Yep, that is perfect. I'm going to steal that whole heart, whole hog in my campaign. Thank you, Gary. Yep. Well, considering you go to another world to find that last clone, hey, um, I ran it, I think, Bill, if you're on, I think I ran it before I was even married. I think I ran it in 95. That's what year did this come out? Did it come out in 95? I, so it came out in 98. So it was after I was married, actually. It was in my first house. And uh, we, the I had like six small rooms and we were played in the kitchen back then. So, uh, oh my gosh, talking about, uh, it was a memorable adventure. My friends, I made my friends make roll entirely new characters to play that adventure because realistically I, their main characters the ones that i've written about on my blog often would have been happy to let the circle of eight guys stay there yeah with nice. competition so the bad guy throughout this which is kind of a little bizarre is this ex wizard <laughs> To Ernie the Merciless, who's now a type four demon Nalfish knee. Uh huh. Kind of a little okay. strange, but you know, put him putting him in there. This this uh, has some major major spell abilities in mm. in in, uh, in Return of the Eight, and is really nasty. And that was a tough fight for the group, but that's a that's a wizard of ancient times, correct? As an artifact name, I don't yeah. know, but it's, yeah, yeah, Iron Flask of Ernie the Merciless, right? Is that Something it? Like that. Yeah. So, Tori Merciless, he appeared in our game. He was an enemy of my paladin character. Nasty piece of work. Yes, okay. I don't That's think what... he's supposed to be contemporary. No, I think... Uh, and... Uh, That's the one thing I could not understand how they wrapped him into this a whole deal. Yeah. I guess they needed an arch nemesis that they didn't mind lose, having get killed off in the adventure. This is Roger Moore, oh, by the way. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. 
um, is why they didn't want to put like, you know, this was not the place to put Rari in. Uh, so that is my thought on it, that they really wanted a really big baddie that they could, uh, that the, yeah. could be defeated. That's, um, that's my guess. Now here's my favorite. I should have snipped this one. My favorite picture in this is when, um, they sex changed Delarzi into Jay, which is ironic, okay. and then Jay's yeah. slapping the uh, the the final clone of uh, Tensor, which has been changed over into uh, Jeretch. Yeah, that's my favorite. That's my favorite picture of, of of Return of the Eight. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Amy, you agree with me on that? That it was kind of didn't make much sense to the whole story, but I think that they just wanted some major nemesis. That's my guess on it. Um, so why don't we finish off the, uh, non, uh, the, the second generation of, uh, of the circle of eight. And let's talk about, uh, one that, uh, is going to play a role in, uh, Greyhawk Khan a little bit. And that is Alhamazad the wise, right? So, um, why don't Mike, you talk about a little bit about, um, your thought process uh, a little bit with uh, and your other bad great spellcaster that you have a place for. Sure. Go for it. Uh, so Alhamazad, in my view, is the replacement for Rary mm -hmm. in the Baclonish corner. Uh, he was probably, I can't remember if one was the student or the other, or if they were like equals. I can't remember. He, origin of that because there really isn't that much about him a lot of it's just like Whoops. snippets oh well Hamza did this or that um i want to say he's from zeef uh it's either is, zeef is or the... beer let me see here da, 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 yeah I, you know i my memory is kind of just fuzzy on the whole thing really he's just this enigmatically high level uh, so he, refer he reveres Istis. Um, he has a real thing against Ket, the biograph of Ket for dealing with uh, Ayus. Um, yeah. And he regards a, a soul imperium as, as evil beyond redemption, the ancient soul. So um, he's lawful neutral. Uh, he calls the city of Zeef his home. He has no known dwelling. So it doesn't really, I don't okay. think it says specifically where he's from. Yeah. Um, but I'll say this about him. He is a super elementalist. So if you go to the second edition elementalists, he has like all the spheres, which is a little bit overpowering. But um, he seems to be uh, <clears throat> like the pinnacle of uh, the Baklunish uh, spellcaster. I know Rari was a Baklunish spellcaster as well, but Rari didn't have hey, the feel. Yeah, Rally didn't have the feel that Alamazad has. So, no. as a backlunar spellcaster, Rally had didn't have that feel. I don't know what you think about that, Anna. But uh... in my campaign, Alhamazad <laughs> and all those, uh, I think I drew a lot of my uh, inspiration from the Al Qadim it, it uh, yeah. campaign. <clears throat> those books, mm -hmm. uh, genie summoning, and all that. It says right in here, um, he, he's uh, similar to, though stronger than those, Sorcerer Kits outlined in Alchemy and Iridium Adventures. That's where there exactly where they got his abilities from. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Do you think that they wanted to, to uh, switch out all the old ones in, in the Circle of Eight and put new ones in because the old ones were, were kind of associated with Gary and, and his run of, so it was a deliberate thing of TSR to, to get the, the old kind of uh, original cast members out because they were kind of tied to Gary's campaign and then get well, new ones in that didn't have that that kind of... Gary said he... Me an idea. Gary said he proposed five. Right. In the chat, yeah. I believe, and that, and okay. said and, that they went with three. Yeah, right. And I'm sure Gary was trying to tie in existing names like Buckner yeah. and stuff like that to to the circle, rather than create something whole cloth. Yeah, you know, Warren's was a great choice. He said Roger Moore added Theodane and Alhamazad, which were both created whole cloth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So, yeah. so it says Alamazad is an ally of Morton and Canaan and knows Bigby, but is unfamiliar with the rest of the circle. So there you go. So and he knows Morton Canyon because uh, he moved out west into the Annals. Okay. Oh yeah, he did, and he had another interesting trait that seems to be especially Greyhawk-based mages seems to go crazy when they go high level and become archmages. They they go nuts and 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 kind of flip out one way or the other. It seems to be a yeah. part of, of of studying too much arcane lore. Then then you kind yeah. of go crazy. Yeah. So Gary, Hewlin's right. Gary Hewlin says he wrote uh, details more of Alamazad and Living Greyhawk Journal Zero, which is good. I'm going to have to get a copy of that. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a real hard copy. So it says also in here, he has several times sent adventures to Dovag Baragu or to Mysterious Islands in the Dramage Ocean adventures. So there you go. Um, interesting. All right. So here's a little tie-in. Uh Mike, let's yeah. talk about a baddie here that you have sure. expanded on. Go for your right. Ab Ab Abby Dalsam. Abby Dalsam, my totally oh. non canon uh, addition to Greyhawk. Yep. Uh, only found in Tome of Magic, second edition. I added them to all because all didn't have any named sorcerers or wizards or <laughs> clerics or any of that. So he is, you know, the, the big bad evil guy in that area. And he's, a, of course, a nemesis of Al Hamazad, because why not? What, uh, you know, what do we know about Al Hamazad? Uh, Abi Dalzim is like the opposite of him, though. It's like, you know, if one's lawful neutral, the other one's probably lawful evil, or I can't remember what his alignment is, it doesn't matter. He's also a elementalist summons genies and all that stuff, but the evil ones. He's also into necromancy. Nice. He's, he's hung out with uh, Incabulous. Nice. So far. He's just this... Uh, <clears throat> he wants to destroy water and stuff. He's mostly... Uh, I call him... Uh, what's his nickname? Shoot. The Father of Droughts. You know, he, his goal is to destroy water and turn, he wants to turn more of the dry steps, you know, in, of the plains into the dry steps. I love it. Yeah. So, Gary, listen here. I'll look at that. Thank you. Got a great, Cabos would be great. Yeah, great to hang out with. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, he, he kind of. It goes with the times. It's 2020, so I guess... It oh, right my there. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike kind of helped me, and I asked him for something. And Gary, during Virtual Greyhawk Con, I'm going to bring out Nassem Ben Khalifa. Okay? That's the name. And I think uh, Ben means uh, the son of, right? So, Nassem Ben Khalifa, who has... Abby Dalzim and Alamazad the Wise both in common. All right. A little Easter egg for you, Gary and Eric Mona and Luke Gygax and Anna. There you go. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you. Thanks to Mike's idea uh, that we ran with. So there you go. All right. And you'll see. You'll... Cold... <laughs> <It's>, uh, cold... <laughs> hey. Have to come up with some new ideas there. Uh, for yeah. you always want to come with a fresh perspective for uh, uh, and not do do the same old, same old there. So uh, there you go, Gary. That'll be a, an interesting. Uh, yeah, I thought yes. Thank you, Amy. Um, right. Uh, is it Bin? So I should go Bin. Okay, I'll go Bin. bin. Thank you. Thank you. Now yeah. some Bin Khalifa. There you go. Thank you, there, yep. Josh Popic. Thank you. <coughs> All right, I'll go Bin Khalifa instead yep. of mm -hmm. Ben Khalifa. Yeah, yeah. If you if you have um, the Al Qadim box set or books, there's a really good section in there on uh, naming conventions. Okay. Yep. And titles and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Very very cool. All right, so we got we got the add-ons before we even run over the main circle for the most part. Um, yeah, so that is cool. Uh, so let me talk about. Um, uh, what was that? Can we uh, add Philidor? Can we add Philidor? We can. 
but why? I'm just kidding. Uh, Sorrow's he's blue. So, so he's blue, and he appears as an he's elf. Not a human. Well, he, he is, is a, human a human in Greyhawk. He's an elf oh, in the Vespi. Never mind. So if you go to the if you go to the From the Ashes box set, he appears as human in Greyhawk City, and is just hanging out, <laughs> right? And, and he actually has a house. Yeah, yeah, they actually show yeah. you where his Just house is. Give him a house, why not? Yeah, give him a house in the uh, in the garden quarter. Um, and then in the Marklands, they talk about him hanging out there as an, a blue elf. And then you never hear anything else. So um, Never used him. Yeah. yeah, I don't hate Sargent at all. I just don't get – I don't get Philidor at all. Gary, um, Phil has no interest in the balance. I, I just, it felt too much like Gandalf was coming, uh, you know, one of the Istari or the wizards. You have plenty of wizards who could have yeah. done that. That's what yeah. it felt like to me. I just don't understand. I the, like 99.9% .9 of sergeant stuff. And I think that's the point one. Yeah. He's supposed I to be. Wish they had, no, I was just going to say, I wish they had uh, done more with uh, Maya Hine. Yeah, and, you know, then yeah because that was a great addition to the the deities and and, mm -hmm. and the story of Greyhawk, so to speak. But yeah, and and but and Greyhawk ha have so many colorful, awesome wizards and archmages of, of various kinds, anyway. So so mm -hmm. it's certainly not short. Meaning we have Morningkainen that is kind of a Gandalf type, or and others that meaning we have enough powerful people that can cast cool spells. What I'm missing is the the, uh, the elves specifically, because they live a long time and their mag arcane magic is supposed to be one of their strengths and still they're missing. I, I think it's part of, of the, the first the early editions way of, of capping demi humans in, in level and stuff and also age. that yeah. yeah and and also because it's it's kind of supposed to be human centric so so i've i've removed that in my campaign the elves are some of the probably the most powerful wizards in in in, in existence that and and some of the dragons because they are they they have a, a thousand years to learn and uh the, you know <laughs> You go back to the original Dungeon Master's Guide, and there's actually age, there's age deaths on even Grails. You know, they may live 2,000 yeah, well, yeah. years old, but there are. And then second edition came along, and they all go to Lender Isle, you know, and they get the Moonbow and all that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. man. So, uh, Philidor is something I just didn't get. And hey, for some people, it's great. I don't, I've never used Philidor at all in my campaign. Because I, I just. Supposed to. Uh, uh, puppet says elven magic predates human magic. I think it's supposed to. Yeah. But yeah. with the Sewell they, they dating, kind of taught, I don't know. taught the flan first and then the, the others afterwards. So so the flan were taught by the elves and Vecna was one of the early adopters. Right out of the box, it certainly seems like the Sewell are the magic you know, masters. Yeah, yeah. They they were the, the humans that kind of went the furthest when it comes to, to acquiring magic skills. But the McLoonish were not that far behind because they managed to, to kind of dole out some, they, at least they returned fire, so to speak. So they had some, <laughs> some, some either that was arcane or divine. I'm not really yeah, sure. Yeah, I was going to say, it, I'm not yeah. sure. So, Are we not sure about the Sul either? Might be divine, there might be some some Thuriston or something involved too. I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Not going back to my campaign, but let's let's discuss this elven thing. As Gary says, yeah. elves aren't as special in Greyhawk as they are in Middle Earth, which is true. Yeah. Uh, they're also not seven feet tall like they are in Middle Earth. Um, most of the mages that go high level in my game are half elves. Uh -huh. It just just seems to be the way it goes. Um, I, I don't know if that's because you know then you, you got a, at least a lifespan of three hundred years. So a lot of like uh, Tim's character, uh, Skeev is half elf. Um, uh, you know, Kazamba's half elf. He's a fighter clerk mage. But you know, it's just they're not super high level. But I think Yoland is uh, what fourteenth. She's like a fighter mage multi class. I think seven fourteen or something, if I recall. Um, I could be wrong on that. Weren't Grey Elves up to two? Yes, they were, Guy. Grey Elves were 2,000. Dark Elves were like 800 to 1,000. And all the other ones fell in between there. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, Health Elf can make a fun cleric too. We have Puppet Gazumba's a fighter cleric mage, the old triple class yeah. character. And I, I guess that's one of the other reasons that there might not be that many really high because instead of, of being only one thing and concentrating on it, elves go wide, so to speak. So they become multi classed and, 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 and spend a long life mastering more than one skill. So that's what I liked about the first edition. I love the triple class character. Isn't Melf like seventh level fighter, twelfth level mage though? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And he it's Mel Melf is half elf too, correct? No, I think he's. Uh, is he I, full? I always depicted him in, as, 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 yeah, as, as. Is he full elf? Okay. okay. Oh yeah, okay. that's what, what I always assumed, I, I, but I'm I'm not sure. I just played him that way. I mean, or, look, had it in, in the campaign as an NPC that way. As a, the falling yeah. apart from the ashes books. Which, um, he should yeah. be in here somewhere. So, um, ah, huh. Philidor was like a super high level. You got. Rari, super high level. Morning Kanan, super high level. Adaluk wasn't that bad level. I think he was 18th or 19th. So, uh, Melf was full. Okay. All right. I don't know why I thought he was half. half. Uh, He's in the name male elf. elf. Male yeah. elf, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about asking Luke if he wanted to play a lower level version of Melf for yeah. Grey Alcon. No, I haven't. Yeah. He's, I have everyone's characters uh, for the most part, except. Wow, I got half of them. I'm still waiting on uh, Gary's making a decision, and then uh, Eric Mona said he's going to come up with a cool idea. I haven't talked to Luke yet. I got to get Luke's character, uh, but um, Prince Bertrand. What's that? Can you imagine? Br yeah, but, yeah, he is elf and artifact of evil, male elf. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know why I thought that. Maybe because I'm thinking of Corellan's arrows, where a lot of them are half elves. And I always, uh, I always utilize them, and there a lot of them are spellcasters. Um, all right, back to great ones here. Uh, we haven't <laughs> talked. Drawmage is Drawmage Jim Ward's character. Mm -hmm. Drawmage is about summoning, right? Yes. Drawmage and Drawmage so, yeah. is instant summon. So let's uh, let me start to scroll her back up here. I was going to say Drawmage is probably one of the circle that I've used the most. Okay. Okay. And I like the nautical theme of him as well. Uh, he lives yeah, under he ended the up sea. Under the sea, he has a lair mm -hmm. in. We never asked Jim Ward that question. We should have. That was yeah. the one we missed. Yep. Yeah. We missed that question, but we'll get him back in a future date. I'm, I'm positive he'll come back. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and the funny thing was, was he said Dramage wouldn't look like that, right? With the earring and all, but uh, this, uh, this art artwork depi that depicted him. Dramage has a lot of spells too in first edition here. Dun, 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 dun. Captain Nemo. Yeah. Break B. Drawmage. There you go. Uh, so you have Instant Summons, which is 7th level player's handbook. That's the one everyone knows. But then look at all these Greyhawk Adventure ones from 1st to 6th. Uh, there's a lot of cool ones in there. The Swift Mount's neat. Breath of Life is neat. So, um, And those would have been created by Jim, right? I'm saying that probably those he would have done himself because it was his character. Yeah, but remember, he said it was a team effort, and he didn't go into specifics on which ones. Uh, Liddem li Bob? <laughs> Bob so, Medal? Is that who it is? Bob Medal? Backwards? Bombadil, yeah. Bombadil. Yes, it was Bombadil. That's right. Bombadil. Jeez, listen to me. Yeah, true. He he based him on Tom Bombadil. Yeah. To this day, Dramage right spelling dramage and dramage throws me off the you know oat dramage ocean right yeah which is probably another a second ode to him as well yeah. uh yeah. Dramage though is kind of the one background behind the scenes one you really don't think of him getting involved in much he kind of stays out of things right for the most part for some reason he hates the mage of the veil which there's a, little, a oh, okay. disconnect there, but oh, that's they're right. somewhat that, close. That's, that's How did I forget that reference? To talk about that afterwards because I'm interested in who that is. So, so yeah, we, we, yeah, after we've done this, we need to go. Jaren Crimea. Yeah. yeah. The black one. You had a theory on that, Anna. And uh, so, uh, yeah, why he um, hates him 
good point. Don't know why, yeah. but um, I should have. I had that veil. That's the one module I forgot was to get bring up the veil of the mage one from downstairs. But I know he's uh, he's in here. He's in Greyhawk Adventures. So let me go to that. So uh, go ahead, Anna on Jaren Crimea, the the veil of the mage. Well, we we have him. Um... In, there's some weird in going on in the Gord books, in the late books, with the okay. Cat Lord and and some. It was so weird that I kind of I forgot <laughs> about all the, the the stuff in in and out. But isn't him? Uh, isn't he a, 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 a drow? I think he's a drow. His no his uh, um henchman. Yeah, yeah. His, she is a drow. He's not. He's human. Oh, okay. But she is okay. Yeah, Jaren Kaimia. Um, is in this in, in this book is 19th level. So um, and he's from. It's according to this, uh, he gathers. He attempted coup d'état in the Great Kingdom. Oh, unfortunately, now we for, have some interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the royal family did not execute Jaron Crimea. Instead, they exiled him, forcing him to submit to an oath never to return, reveal his relationship with the royal family, and never to return or involve him in the Great King again. Ooh, so but that's interesting. That is really not that that not, now that's that's ammunition for that should be more campaign. compelling. Yeah, but yeah. we can build from that. It's it's the the one of the little eggs of or like seeds for a st good story. His yeah. goal should be getting revenge on the Great Kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we have to figure out which side he was. He against the Nail Exis or was he on the Nail Exis side I think earlier it's on? It's right pre there. the Rax family before they were gone, right? Before they were oh, supplanted. So he, he's, he's a Rax, or he was it against the Raxes when they. He was Rax, I think. Okay, so. He's an Alex? He's yeah. Rax. Oh, he's no, an Alex. They... Okay. Doesn't because say. That, that's, that's kind of super cool because if. Alex would were them... not want a wizard that tough competing with them, I think. No, and they had Karulk and a bunch of others that were really powerful that were like 20th yeah. level court wizards and stuff, but they were the ones that always been with Rax, them. Thank you, I Amy. think they were the Thought ones so. that were kind of court wizards for a reason. They've been close to power their entire life, so they were part of the, the power structure. They were loyal, almost family members. So Gary says it's awful canon. Okay. And uh, Gatano yeah, says yeah. that it, um, it's lined up with S3, and I like it to believe it was created by the skyship crashing, Jim, that, that, that veil. Jim Ward says it's metamorphosis alpha, so it's all connected. Uh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Amy says it's related to Rax, and why he wasn't executed is a big mystery. What did he have on them? So, good point. I will bring up this point. It says, the very last paragraph... The Mage of the Valley is obsessed with agents of the Great Kingdom. In fact, he considers any outsiders in his valley to be p potential agents of the Great Kingdom on a mission to harm him. So he's paranoid about his defenses, but he doesn't is not seeking revenge. I guess he's uh, just wants to be left alone and. Uh, yeah, but this is yeah, paranoid. this is kind of interesting. This this is yeah. a seed for for another campaign because I want to oh, cool. to bring in some some yeah that that opens up some interesting possibilities with that and Lord Mistrin and and the Knights protectors awesome. Hexdorians and 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 a bunch of other cool things going on. So yeah, I I want to have one great uh, kingdom campaign in in. Or Empire Ooh. of the Aridi is one of the upcoming name on, on in my campaign. Is that yeah. is oh oh Gary? How long have you been sitting there? Have you been sitting up there for? I hate looking up top. Yeah, I have to look up top. Gary, how long have you been sitting up there, man? Please don't oh, tell me it was. A, please don't tell me it was a long time. No, just a couple minutes. Oh, good, good. Because okay. I'm used to looking down instead of up. Uh, so, uh, so I was just looking in the Greyhawk Adventures book. And there's a magic item in there called the Time Glass of the Mage. Yes. Which is taken from the Veil of the Mage, which implies it was created by the Black One. And its set of powers obviously deals with, you know, time and stuff like that, aging, reversing aging and stuff. <clears throat> and I often wondered if that played in something of his, you know, like, does he want to buy more time to get back to the Great Kingdom? Is he trying to go back in time to fix, you know, being exiled or whatever? I, th I also think that Gitano is right where this ties in with MA too. 
I think with Jim Ward's stuff, or Jim wrote this, I think he's thinking a lot of that, you know, uh, space and time travel in this. Uh, man, this is a this is a massively powerful item in here. M Mike, you're correct. Yeah. Yeah. Once per 24-hour period, the owner can invert the time glass and command one of the following. Time stop. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, slow or part water. That's bizarre. That that why uh, yeah why would you ninth level or a hay yeah. spell that's that's weird yeah. but yeah so so with that powerful of a magic item it's only a small leap to having a time travel storyline Gary welcome on man how are you hey guys <clears throat> let me make my quick case here for the mage of the veil vale. okay in my opinion this has got to be thousand year old lore it's not recent lore. This whole thing where you have a mage that travels there in the 400s and takes over this valley and makes it his own. No way. That doesn't work. You want, you want this thing, you want this place to have been a mystery even to the founders of Kealand. This valley was inviolate to them even as far back as when the migrations occurred. So, oh, so this is earlier than migrations? Or, or yeah, I would, I would have this mage of the veil be there when Vecna okay. was around. You know, ah, this was someone okay. like a Tom Bombadil who was almost untouchable by anybody else. So and who, so, so who, where did he get his magic from? Is, is it Flan or, or, or does it come from? I mean, he seems to be, you know, if you follow Egg's uh, mythos, he's some kind of Denny power. Uh -huh. So uh, he's been around so long that he has already acquired some sort of uh, deity-like status. But you don't even have to go that far. I mean, he could just be an extremely long-lived uh, archmage that we don't really know anything about. But the description in the original 1983 guide was of this place where, you know, there was treasure in the rivers and, and you know, magic and mystery all over the place. And, you know, it was something that was really difficult to approach and a big MacGuffin for DMs to play with. Not something that was just lying around there for 800 years and then suddenly got uh, settled by this dissident A.R.D. mage who, by the way, was called Jason a couple times in the text. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, so Jaren, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I would just talk that out completely, but well, to each his own. Can you give it, um, can you give it um, credence that uh, Jim was uh, pressed? I know the Veil of the Mage predates. Oh, absolutely. But v Veil of the Mage predates this, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's original folio stuff. Yeah. No, the actual Veil of the Mage module I'm talking about. Where no. You... No, no, that one that it. one is later. But, but it's later in 88? Okay. Every, okay. every so, so, setting book, I think. So someone who's an expert on the novels, can you correct me on this? Which came out first? No, uh, Gygax's description of the, of the Mage of the Veil or this book? Jim Ward's book. I think that Gygax books came... The, the, the books where the Veil is part of it is some of the latest in the Gord books. So they were after he left TSR. Several okay, years. So yeah. Ward didn't have anything else to work with other than what we knew in the 1983 guide. So. Well, or if... Uh, unless he knew something that Gary had written down and left and he used it after Gary left. I don't know. Yeah, yeah but it doesn't sound like anything that Gary did. So yeah, whoever he collaborated with on that just... They just came up with something. Yeah, it's plausible, but it just doesn't evoke the kind of wonder and mystery you'd want for a place like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> Gary, um, you created which of the you created uh, your um, Theodane was yours to place in, right? Are you saying Theodane? Yeah. So, <clears throat> I guess I should go back and just tell you guys what happened in the nineties. Uh, what was what was the book um, that established the... Okay, so we had Rary the Traitor, right? We had these three members of the Circle of Eight killed. Yeah. Um, yep. And it almost seemed like Sargent was kind of content to kind of leave things that way. And, you know, in our early discussions, Eric Mona and I just thought, no, no that's a, it's a Circle of Eight. It's a Circle of Eight for a reason. Um, Morden Kanan would seek to restore that as soon as he could. Um uh, Eric had some ideas about clones, and I, I'm like, once you're appealing to clones or time travel and your material, you're probably already off, you know. Uh, but the Tenzer, here's the funny thing, the Tenzer and Olukanem that died in Rary the Traitor 
were already clones. Yeah, because exactly. of the Falcon series. Because of Vecna lives, no? Vecna lives. Oh, he, they all get killed in the, the Falcon trilogy, too. I mean, Ve Vecna lives already had a preposterous scenario in which you had the yeah. entire Circle of Eight wiped out by a Vecna clone uh, who was wielding the hand in the eye. Um, it seems to be a kind of a lack of, 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 of fantasy. They go back and kill content. the same yeah. guys over and over and over oh, again. It's, a, it's a, a, a disrespect for the setting, I, I would say. Yeah. Um, you know, they reach for the biggest names and they create this mega module and then they say, well, we don't, we don't care what the repercussions of it are. I mean, the module could even end with uh, Vecna being the sole god of Greyhawk, but, um, it, you know, it, it, so it's something that needs to be fixed. The status quo needs to be repaired. So Eric and I, after we had, you know, met online and discussed this for months, if not years, we decided to propose a dragon article that would restore the circle. And so we said, you know, our first inclination is to use names, personages that are already in the setting and not try to create something new. So I reached into Isle of the Ape and found Warren Starcoat. And I said, this guy has got to be one of them. First of all, he's in the right location. He's got the right level to be one of the Circle of Eight. And he's got the right sort of makeup to be one of them too. So he was he was a no brainer. And so I wrote him up for the uh, Living Greyhawk Journal and uh, detailed how he you know fit into the circle. And <clears throat> I think we had a couple of other characters. I think we'd use we'd propose Bucknard, who was a sort of a mm -hmm. a mage like figure figure that really didn't have many details behind him. And then we had one other, and I just can't remember who it was. It could have been Leomond. Um, no, was it Nozzle from Nozzle's Marvelous Pigments? Uh, I thought it was. It, it might have so. been. But, That's what I thought. But, I, I remember reading that somewhere. Yeah. But we, you know, so we submitted this in the mid-90s, and Roger Moore, I think, was editing or participating in Dragon. He kind of read it and said, oh, I really like this, but this is not the time for this kind of an article right now. So um, he shelved it, but then he did Return of the Eight. And in Return of the Eight, he said, okay, let's do what you guys proposed to do. He brought in Eric as a consultant and kind of filled in. He created those two new characters, Alhamazad and uh, Ariasen. Um, mm -hmm. the, the former I really liked. I wrote him up in, in the Living Greyhawk Journal. I think he was a good replacement for Rary. Um, it kind of allowed you to create a little bit of drama between him and members of the Boneheart. Um, as former students, and it allowed you to, you know, play around with some of the elemental magic that was really popular around that time. So that was kind of cool. But then the other character just, for me, never really worked. I mean, it's this elf that has a dragon yeah. that polymorphs. I mean, it's just not something that felt very Gygaxian. But, um, you know, we, we made it fit. And then... Um, yeah, so then when then so then we just kind of put this new spin on things and and that's what I mean Eric came up with this idea that said, you know, if you really look at this stuff, Morton Kanan is kind of a villain. I mean, he really in his attempt to uh, affect this militant version of neutrality, he is in effect creating problems for the good guys. And so the suggestion is that Morton Kanan kind of sent uh Robilar and company into Castle Greyhawk in 570 and caused IUs to be released through their blundering, essentially. And the idea, the idea was you had Furiandi and Voluna, these two great nations about to unite, about to intermarry to become this virtual great kingdom in the West. And Morning came and said, well, that's going to interfere with a lot of our rights. You know, that might even swallow up the city of Greyhawk. It would probably take back divers. Uh, so he said, well, that, that needs to be disrupted. So the idea was he release, release IUs, set the balance right, and create this uh, stalemate in the north. Um, and so in an attempt to explain why Rary became a traitor, Eric developed a storyline where he basically said that Rary discovered this fact. I mean, Rary didn't go crazy out of, you know, you know for no reason out of, 
out of the blue, he basically said, you betrayed our principles by doing this. And not only that, you didn't inform us that you were going to do this. So boom, that's what created this uh, incident during the signing of the Pact of Greyhawk. So Rary has a little bit more motivation. It's not completely out of the blue. Um, why would he not go after Morden Kanan, though? Well, you know, easier said than done, right? So yeah. I think the suggestion is that uh, he okay. attempted to do something, but of course, Morden Kanan is smarter than that. He let he let three of the other Circle members die. And of course, Robolar, who was also betrayed, um, right. is it makes total sense for him to then go off with Rary. So... That whole Robolar clone thing, I don't know. That just doesn't, that doesn't work for me either. <laughs> well, we're not about him. Hey, yeah. Morgan Kanan also sent all those wizards to check out Haldemar's tomb. He, he absolutely did, and he didn't go himself. He didn't go. Same Interesting. MO. Interesting. But Morgan is his neutrality seems to be he won, always wants conflict because he always backs the, the underdog all the time, so he makes sure he that there always two sides. Yeah, always... <laughs> Two sides that can fight, so to speak. So it's too. Yeah, I mean, if if you had a very uh, philosophical, militant form of neutrality, you would be forced to do things like help the evil side. Well, yeah, he ha helps the side that is about to 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 lose, so to speak. When someone becomes the underdog, then he supports them. It's a very very um, interesting whole yeah. entire topic. Because yeah. uh, I just I was doing some reading on Rari beforehand, and it's just like he doesn't look like he had this in him anywhere until it happened. I can't see any readings of that that there was uh, enmity between him and Warden Kanan, you know, uh, at all. But I guess that's uh, that's a reasoning. You think that Sergeant made that decision there, Gary? You think that's that he just that's the way neutrals act. That, that's the way neutrals act in their their thought process. So. Well, was that was that Sergeant or was that Cook? Uh, who wrote this? It doesn't even say who the author is. It just says official game uh, design, Anthony Pryor. Uh, yeah, so it might not even been Sergeant's decision. Okay, editing Anne McCready. That's it. I mean, it doesn't say with the help of anyone else. That's it. that's so. Hmm. I know there was something between Rari and Otto Luke. Uh, I, uh, Amy, yeah, but uh, well, it, it it felt it felt bizarre. It just did. But hey, you know, it just it's something we live with, and we uh, we moved we move on with it. Yeah. And I still have Rari out in the bright desert. I, no one is going out to uh, to to deal with him, and he hasn't really expanded his uh, holdings out there. Yeah, he hasn't expanded, and if. He had really offended the city of Greyhawk. There would have been plenty of assassins and wizards and clerics that could have all banded together and took him out. Okay. That's right, Puppet Dad. No one wants to take credit for uh, Rary the Trader. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you hit or miss when you uh, make so many uh, major changes. All right. So, Gary, you brought this up. The mage from the Ghost Tower of Inverness, Galapadreidal. Is that how I said that properly? Ooh. I guess so, Galapadreidal. Yeah. 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 Uh, what do you know about him? Uh, just what <laughs> we know from the module that he's some kind of badass. I mean, soul gem, yeah. I mean, he creates a soul gem that's able to trap so many souls in it. Um, yeah. Now, is he uh, Earthland? Is he something before the Earthland? Uh, we're not sure about be, that. Got to be Vecna contemporary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would argue Gallup is worse than Vecna. If he, you, I, I ran that module yeah. recently, and the description in it said that there are like millions of souls in that gem. I mean, it's a, it's just an a entire writer's, kingdom. You know, of course, that's just writing fluff. Is it that but, the old Soulmen and and the, those flank hill uh, kingdoms that were in, in the area? Had, yeah, or? it had to be in that area. And so yeah. people rose up. He went off and left, and then they tore his tower down or something like that. Uh, he was not good. Not a good guy. Powerful, though. Well, he's actually mentioned here in Rari the Traitor, too, which I found interesting. So I, I just I just noticed it as I was scanning through it. He's, uh, he's got uh, um, a little here. Uh, it's just about Ghost Tower for the most part. Many have sought the Ghost Tower, but if you... 
Uh, all right. So I uh, just I who guess wrote Ghost Tower? who wrote Ghost Tower? Isn't that Hammock? Is that one Hammock right there? I, I don't have uh, it on me. It's interesting because Gygax uses soul gems in another way. He creates them as the as the backstop for someone who has a soul that may be killed. Uh, a soul gem allows you to survive an otherwise permanent death. So Eus has a soul gem because right. if he's killed on Earth, he's permanently dead. But he has a soul gem right. hidden somewhere on Zugmoy's uh, demon lair. So that allows him to escape that permanent death. Helen Hammock, yep. Yes, I thought. Hammock, yep. All right, so let's jump to another high-level mage who has little bits of pieces of him all over on paper. And once you read them, part of his essence goes into you, and that's Corruptus. Mm -hmm. yeah. another, another ancient mage. Yeah. Gary, what do you know about Corruptus? I mean, he seems to have been around about 1,300 years ago, so that places okay. him before the migrations. Okay. Possibly another Flan despot. I mean, the Flan just had no luck. They just <laughs> were, well, they were ruled by it. despots all over the place. Yeah. And he had some evil gnomes that were his, uh, you know, vanguard, I guess, or, you know, they his servants. And, and he was either overthrown or his kingdom fell apart. And then he decided to build this, this uh, refuge in White Plume Mountain. Curtis I... was busy back then. <laughs> I actually yeah. like the return module better than the original, and this it's one of the rare cases where I do, but I really like the depth of the return, to, which is in the Silver Edition box set, uh, and I ran that one instead of the original, and uh, my guys had a lot of fun with it. So um, You never meant to know anything about him in the, the original, re yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, um Flan only recorded the bad news. Yeah, it sounds like it, doesn't it? Yeah. So well, that's uh, ab absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, you uh, had the you had the cool hook with these three artifacts from the city of Greyhawk too, and I thought that was the part that really kind of made it special. The black razor, uh, well, whelm, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sir Bluto Sans Pete, Pete, or Pete. Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of cool stuff that you could definitely work into your Greyhawk campaign. I ran. White Plume Mountain, 5th edition. That's the most recent thing I'd, I've done with Greyhawk wow. uh, before the COVID thing hit. And as I'm running, I'm realizing Black Razor was owned by someone and it was stolen and put in that mountain. So if the players come and retrieve it, who's the owner who would want his sword back? And I oh, have right. no answer for that. I mean, it sounds like Elric's blade. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Day. probably ripped right off from hey right, if you're not stealing you're not trying right so <laughs> you know uh, absolutely um gary you get there was a whole list of of mages on, on that on that list that uh i, I yeah, saw uh, you, you know what you know what we haven't talked about let's do this we haven't talked about egg wolf yet let's talk about egg wolf. Right. okay let's talk well, it was a big topic of conversation today it was it was a huge topic in, in, in <laughs> kind of a, the wrong way I don't care what's going... All right, I'm going to say this, and I'll probably get banned for 30 days on Twitch. Igwolf is evil, okay? I don't... That's all you need to know. Anyone who traps a demon lord and then has a, a child with a demon lord is an evil character. I don't care how you spin it. So be it. Um, whatever whatever they want to do, that's up to Hasbro. But in 1E2E, in my game, it's an evil... She's an evil character. I don't care what... She's male, female, doesn't matter. Evil is evil. There you go. I I totally agree, except for one thing. I'm not 100% sure how explicit they're going to make this connection between Tasha and Eggwill. Okay. The, the, co the covers seem to indicate that they will, but who knows? They may not write a, write a, a link. They may never write a word of, of text about that. Okay. Nope. So we don't know. <clears throat> but I hope um, they focus on the Tasha thing, really, because if they can come up with anything colorful or in interesting, it could fill in years worth of tasha you know backstory mm -hmm. why not well as you know in uh, um another genius thing that eric mona did in expeditions is he had the uh, opposite alignment of the seven right in in there yeah. so i actually have the lawful good version of 
Tasha, and they didn't kill all the, they killed all the other ones, but they didn't kill the lawful good one. And Ashta is now exists in my campaign. It's kind of <laughs> cool, you know, something that happened yeah. there. So, um, some picks, Gary, you linked all the picks of 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 uh, of Igwolf. I, I mean, that I had come across, except for one, and I, I got to go over a couple of these too. Uh, where is it? Okay, we we've seen that one with the, with the fiends embrace on a great yeah. adventure. So uh, that is out of dungeon. Um, uh, that's during. I think that's during uh, Paizo Hawk era. I believe. Uh, Correct. Probably it, a little bit. Well, it, yeah, er, early. I think it's before they released the the adventure paths and stuff. If I remember correctly. This is a young Tasha slash Igwolf pick that I found yeah. by. Nay Nayaka N. I mean, I love that picture. Yeah, that seems to be the same artist that made the iconic one on Dragon Magazine. Uh it's not. It's it's a different. It's not? Nope. Oh, it's okay, different artist. Yeah, it's a, but it's the same inspiration. It's inspi inspired inspired by that. Yeah, she yeah, did a younger version of uh -huh. of Big Wolf, which I I like that. Oop. Um, very neat looking. So, mm -hmm. and then there's the one that you like, Gary. So, and that I wonder is, why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I already had that one linked. I'm like, no, you linked it. So, um, what are the mysteries of Egg Wolf? Anyone want to tackle that one? Well, she's got a really nebulous origin story. We really don't know what her origin is. Is she catite? Is she baclunish? Is she flan? We really don't have a good origin story for her. And, you know, someone like Jason, for instance, has suggested that she is, in fact, Baba Yaga herself. And that would require a little more torture to make it fit with the canon that's developed so far, but it could work. I mean, someone for their campaign could definitely go that way and make her the big mother of witches. Hmm. Um, but I feel like maybe she's one step removed from that. She's possibly the daughter of Baba Yaga I like and that. therefore has the, you know, the, the heritage, but doesn't, hadn't quite achieved the success yet. So Maybe she, if we incorporate what Eric did, maybe she, you know, began life as Tasha and uh, built herself up as a mage and, you know, met Zagig and company and, and learned, uh, you know, how to capture demons, everything about demons from him. D ended up writing her own book, The Demonomicon. Mm -hmm. And at that point decided, you know what, I want power. And I went, I'm going to get it, and I'm going to get it quickly. And she decided to capture uh, Grast um, and then launch her short-lived, uh, I, I, I don't really want to even call it an empire, but, you know, her little her little realm in the border between Paralyn and Ket. So yeah. that, you know, ends up becoming Carlos's favorite module. And one of my top three, I'm sorry, Gary, uh, Shokanth, yeah, uh, just, but um, that is... Uh, you think about this. So you have Ayus is her son and Drelzna is her daughter, right? Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. that's some pretty cool uh, lore there off the character. And then they yeah. really go into developing her in Return of the Eight as this pulling the strings behind the scene character in uh -huh. here. Uh, well, well Gy Gygax certainly suggested that already. That wasn't well, yeah. a completely new thing. <clears throat> okay. And she teases her son in the Gord books, which is kind of awesome. Teases uh, yeah. Ayus like crazy. Yeah. They treat Ayus like the, the spoiled little brat. They, they kind of try to teach him things and play pranks on him and stuff. It's fun. Yeah. I love Igwell as a villain. I used her a lot in third edition. I would say she was probably the number one big, bad, evil guy I used. And I think you weren't alone from, from what I understand. I mean, the Pezo guys were big fans and definitely used her uh, as, as often as they could. But I just felt that she also had gotten a little overexposed at that point. Um, she became too, qu too quick, the villain of choice. Um, so, Well, I know this. They, they made it in expeditions. Eric made it so she couldn't be killed off because... It's actually a clone of hers or a simulacrum that gets full sentience of hers in that adventure. So you're not worried about if they succeed and destroy that character that, that you kill off Igwolf. So that was his, their little trick in, in that module. Vane, you know, creates this, uh, sure. I, I think it's a simulacrum. And then, um, you know, she goes off and, and running and yeah, try, you know, so. Well, uh, 
remembering back to the 1980s, Gygax also had her as the main villain of Isle of the Eight. She was the behind the scenes villain okay. who had to be yeah. stopped. So by retrieving the crook of Rao. Whose yeah. uh, who's idea was it to tie in the crook of Rao to banishing all of the demons. I think uh, that's a sergeant. Isle of the Eight. Was that a sergeant thing? Or... I think so, because I think it appeared in 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 the um, from the ashes and and the uh, the mark. No, I, I think that's post. Roger Moore actually. Oh, Anna. okay, okay. It was yeah. post, so uh... so sergeant was perfectly happy with his new dark greyhawk. I mean, he uh -huh. he didn't retcon his dark oh. greyhawk in any way. Ah, that's true. And then yeah, <laughs> and he put you know he put those new fiends in in the Great Kingdom and in Ayuz. He had all the uh, cambians, which I actually love those cambians that he created for uh, Ayuz's generals. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, Sindal. They were very Sindal is yeah. awesome. I, I played on that. Yep. I would not have them dismissed by the crook at all. I would leave nope. them where they were. Yep. And then uh, what was that um, duke or something that he created near the border of the Great Kingdom that was this big uh, fiendish menace? I mean, he he, he lasted so Severin. Yes, He's that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he yeah. lasted so quickly. <laughs> In, in canon Except that we, we, yeah. we hardly ever got to use him, but he bar basically, you know, had a whole army of uh, uh, fiends at his disposal as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but it was Roger Moore who who felt that, and, and legitimately probably, that, you know, Greyhawk maybe had gone a little too far, a little too dark. I just don't know if that kind of retcon is always the best way to fix things, but it's a quick undoing. No, you, you can't. De yeah. The crook of Raw is depicted as being too powerful, just like one thing, and you just hold it up, and hundreds or thousand miles away, all the just dispelled. It doesn't make sense. That to me, that's just yeah, that's just too simplified. It's and, the <sighs> mechanics going backwards. That is kind of weird. What drives me crazy about the la latter day TSR and Wizards. That's a job you should give to PCs. Why are you taking this in your own hands and just writing it off, you know, yep. as a, as yep. a fait accompli? Mm -hmm. Give it to PCs and then let yep. them solve the problem. But I thought, Gary, that was one of the reasons why, and I guess I'm incorrect on this, that Warner's Starcoat was granted access to the Circle of Eight because he did that. He was successful. He's one of the ones. Well, he retrieved the crook for Isle of the Ape. Right, he was one of the successful adventurers in that, right. and that won him plaudits from Tancer and the rest of the circle. But it it was not for the purpose that what what, what Roger Moore created ah, later okay. down the road. It was it was just to stop uh, Igwill from okay uh, invading the Prime Material Plane with some kind of army of of uh, Hades or something. Interesting. That would have been interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very very interesting. Cool. Now you're giving me ideas again here. Uh oh, yep. that's not good. All oh, right. Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah, not someone, my players though, but yeah. Someone tell me the backstory of this character who I've never used before. Narlon the White, alchemist and the prophet of Bakub in in the Fate of Istis. Oh, I don't never. Eighteenth level him. magic user. Okay. Anyone? No. no. <laughs> so I stumped you. I stumped you all. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Never uh, used them. All right. It's so long ago since I read. Okay, I was just and I forgot about it. Narlon is. It's, it's great to have a mage that's actually a worshiper of Bokob. I mean, you, we hardly have any. Yeah. Okay, so none of you. All right. I I just I was doing some research and I tried to I tried to one up because Gary had this list of all of them. I'm like, I gotta find one myself, and so I came across this one and. Uh, it says the dual role of Narlon, the white alchemist and prophet of Bakub is uh, uh, one all servant, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. Uh, so there's a super high level one. And we're talking 1E, 2E. And Gary said 15th level and higher is really where you want to concentrate on. So, okay. Well, uh, he's this character's in there. So um, just just yeah. note that it's, uh, it seems to be the polar of strings in that, yeah. in that, in that uh, adventure. Now I want to ask a question since we about a, a wizard that. I'm not sure if it really has any connections to Greyhawk, and that's a Sererak of the, the Tomb of Annihilation. Did he ever had any real Greyhawk connections, or was that just shoehorned in, or, or and who was a Sererak? The Tomb of Horrors? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think the suggestion is that the vast swamp uh, might have been his kingdom, uh -huh. and the swamp was either the result of some disaster or 
potentially uh, it just was the nature of his kingdom. But um, I think he is, you know, yet another Ur Flan yeah, despot. And, and the timing is, is just the question. Graphic novel Vecna Hand of the Revenant suggests that Aserak is the uh, like right hand man of Vecna. Oh, that's an interesting wizard wise. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's just disappointing because I feel like whenever you have a separate NPC individual, don't collapse the hooks. I feel Resist the temptation to collapse the hooks. I feel so mm -hmm. Star Wars ish. Yes, it because that means. Everyone has to be connected? No. Yeah. Everyone doesn't have to be connected. And, yeah. And it creates an opportunity to create even more lore if you just yeah, leave right. it alone. Do, but, do we know how long the, 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 yeah. that tomb out there in the, the swamp have been around? No, Maybe is it no I don't think there is any. Years, hundreds of years? Yeah. If it's Earthland, probably almost a thousand maybe, right? Okay, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, uh, because he's a demi lich in the adventure, isn't he? Yes, yeah. which is a lich that's which is a lich that's so old and powerful that exactly. they basically. Exactly. I mean, we're talking yeah. at least a thousand years or, or more just to become a demi lich from from losing the the the, the, the lich lich powers that have vanished over the centuries. Right. Actually, I mean, give it, go ahead. Yeah, Mike. I was going to say, what would probably do a lot of justice, maybe, is if he were Ullman. Well, wow, that would be that's, interesting. That's huh. interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'd have to change that, that K to a Q. <laughs> yeah, but that, that can just be a, a Oridian spelling or, or whatever, so to speak, or common spelling instead of, of, of Oldman spelling or something. So, yeah. It, this yep. is a very cool discussion as we get into a lot of magic uh, yeah. background theory on, on, and yeah. development on. Um, all right. I want to ask on this character. The most iconic picture of all time, but I but uh, this reference is probably not Greyhawk. But here we go. So uh, I have a placement for this character, but um, I don't think it's Greyhawk. But let's go for it, right? A miracle, the chaotic. Okay, so I have a miracle in in the Paladin in Hell. Gary, is there any connection at all to Greyhawk, or is this just some thing that was written up after the fact? Well, there's no, there's no official lore on that, but I've seen some really good fan stuff that makes convinces me that it would fit very well. Okay. Just as official as Abby Dalzi. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Okay. Just yeah. as official as half of the rest of Greyhawk that hasn't been. <laughs> yeah. Well, we used the Miracle the Chaotic as our main, our first fundraiser. We used him as the baddie. And uh, his stats are all done up in Paladin and Hell. He's a wild mage, not a regular mage. Uh, which is pretty cool and uh, very uh, very chaotic, and it was a, it was a fun fight, um, and that was uh, in 2019, and um, first time Anna ever played with us uh, that night. Um, it, it was a great a great night. I was just curious if uh, beyond this, if there's any connection, but you know, hey, why not have him in, right? Why not have him? Yeah. He's a, obviously a planner traveler, but there's no reason you can't have him hop into Greyhawk here and there and cause trouble. So I was just curious if you had ever read anywhere where someone had placed him. Um, that you knew about, but uh, you know, there's you're right. There's so much. Oh yeah. There's so much all over the place. <laughs> as far and as if you want to go go back with keeping it to the old school, I mean, mm -hmm. you do have that Zane character, which uh, was created by Kuntz. Right, with a uh, Z or Maze of Zane is the adventure. It's actually been it's spelled multiple ways, with which is very Gygaxian for for it to have multiple spellings, but um. That is uh, tied to the lore of the Great Kingdom. Apparently, he's some kind of two-headed lich that uh, is extremely powerful and has been a thorn in the side of the throne for years. I don't know. There isn't. I, I haven't read all of Kunz's stuff, his third-party stuff, so I don't know if he's created more lore uh, surrounding him. So I know, I know. He. It's a huge module that with Necromancer Games put out in the third. Uh, I have it. Uh, and I think it's with the Z, not the X. Maybe he had to change it because of uh, oh, yeah, canon. Maybe, or, yeah. yeah, and that's why it got changed there. So, yeah, Miracle of Frame. That, yeah, number 73. That's exactly it. Um, lot, lots of fun stuff. I know you had mentioned uh, that one, Gary. I know there was a whole bunch of other ones on the list. Uh, Merlin, Merlin's a high-level. He's like an illusionist and a mage. 
correct? I, I have him down here before he becomes like a quasi deity. Twelfth uh, level in both, and a paladin. Although I think the suggestion was that he started as a paladin. Okay, um, and he dueled. Okay, and, and that he, you know, with a lot of these quasi deities, it's not clear that they actually adventured to gain these other look at that spell uh, class like powers that they somehow aggregate it when you become uh, godlike. So I don't know. Okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't consider him a mage for okay. the purposes of. Okay. There was a couple others. Why don't you uh, talk about some of the ones I, uh, that we haven't covered? I thought you. I thought you would have grabbed them for us. Oh um, man! I, yeah, I gotta, you got to scroll back about five miles now. Yeah, I was going to say. Let me see. If uh, I can. All right. So. So uh, one that just comes to oh, mind, just because uh, the Great Kingdom is is Shandor. Now he's a creation of Sargent. And he's like one of the most powerful mages that's supposed to have been around ever. And uh, he's like the guy who created a lot of the early magic for the Overkings and set up their system of laws and a lot of their, uh, um, you know, basically their traditions and ways of doing things. Maybe he even set up the Malachite throne. Oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah, was... so he's. How about alignment wise? Neutral? Good. I'm, I'm guessing lawful neutral. Okay. Given all his accomplishments, they seem very lawful. And this is this is uh, how many how, how uh, five hundred years ago uh, time frame roughly? I'm yeah, I would say around with the first Overking. Okay. Yeah. Five to six hundred years. years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he's like a Merlin-like figure for the setup of the kingdom, I think. And Sargent, of course, always drawing on his British roots. You know, it definitely feels like a Merlin-like figure. Is he detailed at all in the um, um, reference? Oh God, uh, the yeah, he's in uh, he's Ividian in Ividian dying. dying. Okay, okay, he is, yeah. but there there isn't a tremendous amount of detail. It's just sort of sprinkled in there. Okay, Excellent. okay, I found the list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to crash anything by scrolling back there uh, while we're while we're live. But um, I do. I mean, do you have any preference? You just want to? Uh, some out? some of the ones you think are more memorable. I know we're uh, you know maybe we'll run a little. So over another time another. I just I'll hit the oldest ones first. Zunk, T Z U N K. Oh, Zunk, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that's obviously an anagram of Kuntz, right. and and Gygax threw that in there as a. As a hook related to, I think, the Codex of Infinite Planes. So this this guy, in a very Lovecraftian fashion, possessed the Codex of Infinite Planes and then got badly punished for doing so. So huh. he would he would command its power. I mean, it's supposed to be one of the most powerful artifacts ever. So he would command its powers in order to create gates and bring in creatures. And this is like thousands of years ago, possibly. Um, so all we know is then that Sergeant placed his tomb somewhere in the north, or at least the tombs of his hands, which were cut off um, somewhere in the north, and that's kind of like a neat little hook. Um, but he may have been a, a um, resident of the Isle of Woe. That's what uh, that's what Casey says, yeah. Related to Codex mm -hmm. and the Isles of Woe. Okay. All right. Interesting. And uh, time frame on that character. Gosh, I would say pre-migration, pre so. Wow. Okay. Maybe, but I, but I think even during the migrations, the Isle of Woe had sunk centuries before, so it could be two thousand. So Vec, so pre Vecna even. Yeah, it could be pre Vecna. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I I never heard of him. I mean, that's cool that they use cunts backwards, but I never heard of that story before. Yeah, that's uh, I think one e DMG. Oh, I've heard the name. One e. Don't think oh, it's in the codex itself, right? Is that where it is? In the, yeah, so I think he's the NPC. Okay. He's the NPC named in the codex. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yep. So there's a fight. Uh, tell us. Uh, so Casey, Living Greyhawk. Uh, there's a big fight with the codex and I use right and uh, Kerman and my mentor tried stealing it or something. Do, do I have this right in Living Greyhawk? Just if you want to put that in chat, I thought I, I recall something about that happening. Um, during Living Greyhawk era at the end. I could be wrong and I could be smoking something in, in another world, but I thought that th that, had, uh, that had come up. So, cool one, cool one. What else you got there, Gary? You gotta have Next one on the list is Slarotin. Yes. We kind of already oh, talked yes. about him a little, but 
-hmm. You know, if Len, in fact, created him and that entire legend, that's fantastic because that means it's, you know, basically dates back to the origin of everything Sewell. Yeah. Uh, oh, we know, he was a, we know he was a major power. We don't know how many there were. We know he was the last one, mm -hmm. at least the last one that the, that the Sewell who survived recognized. Their suggestion that some of them may have escaped through gates to other worlds and other planes of existence, but that's a, you know, ob an obvious hook for DMs to play with. But uh, yeah, he survived long enough in order to save about 12 houses of the old Sewell Imperium, create a tunnel through the crystal mist and bring them across. And then that seems to have been his last act. He sealed it off, trapped the Lerara Sewell in there because he wasn't apparently counting heads as he <laughs> let everybody out. And then the Lerara Sewell became a really nice hook. Uh, that lasted, you know, they were trapped for a thousand years and then have just recently been released. And there are these, you know, really crazy quasi-religious albino soul that, you know, could become almost like uh, uh, Melnibonians for your campaign if you want to go in that direction and just have them as, as crazy as you want. Mm. To think that it was all kicked off possibly by Leonard. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's that was a pretty amazing uh, uh, piece of information. What 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 led you to want to ask him that question today? Well, you know, given that we had you know decided that it was going to be about the mages, and I was compiling this list last night, and I said, Slorotin, I wonder, first of all, I forgot to ask him, is it an anagram of someone's name? Because I've been trying to figure that out, too. It kind of sounds like it in some way. Doesn't it? It has that feel yeah. like Len, it yeah. might have been. Yeah, been yeah, but Len didn't do head. anagrams at all. Len did it reverses if he, like, with Lurg if he needed to, right? Right. Yeah. But you, you do get the three letters of Len in it. So yeah. <laughs> it might be. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I thought, you know, it's old enough lore that maybe he did participate in creating it. And I am glad to see that he did. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. Because almost everything I wrote in the, in the Sheldamar Valley is kind of based off that one hook. You know, it's the, it's the dominant hook of the entire valley. It's, um, I think Len had his hands in a lot more things than we'll, we may ever know uh, mm -hmm. that, um, you know, it's not, he's not directly quoted for accomplishments on it. And uh, it's good to pick it, you know, to find out these little bit tidbits here and there. So. It's probably that classic, you know, he's probably forgotten more than we'll ever know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's true. That's true. And the Nistel's, the Nistel's Magic R, uh, Nistel Nistel, coming, coming out that he wrote that spell is just uh, is pretty cool to find that out tonight. So, definitely. All right, well, uh, we've got a couple others. And we'll... I'll say we already talked about Baba Yaga. Uh, Heward. Heward is uh, yeah. quasi, quasi -D -D. an interesting character. Yeah, in, uh Quasi Day, apparently some sort of relative of Zagig, which makes sense. Of course, we have to bring up Zagig as well. Yeah. We might as well bring them up together. So, um, one of the first pieces I ever wrote online in the early 90s uh, was in response to someone else's piece who had written up a kind of biography of Zagig. And I said, well, that's, you know, interesting, but it doesn't seem to be based on a lot of the canon. I mean, it didn't seem to put all the canon together. So I said, I'm going to do my own, and it's going to be annotated. So I'm, you know, trying to finish my homework at MIT, but at the same time devoting hours and hours to this article that I'm going to write, and I'm going to post it on Usenet, which is sort of an online message board system that existed in the early days of the Internet, uh, before even the web. So... I wrote this thing up and I, you know, I did invent some material in order to fill in gaps and explain why I did that and put it up. And then one of the things I said was that uh, Zagig ended up adventuring with a group called the Company of Seven. And I said, this Company of Seven is um, a group of friends and adventurers about 200 years before the start of the current campaign, maybe 250, uh, who... Uh, define like an earlier generation that Zag uh, the Gygax would, would fall back on for lore. So this earlier generation never really, you know, campaigned in this setting, but he would always fall back on them for, their, for the lore. And most of the roster has stayed the same. I might have had to change a couple of figures in response to other uh, canon that has arisen in, in the intervening years. But 
Um, two of those members are Heward and Zagig. And uh, the suggestion is that Heward may be an uncle or some kind of relative who's a little bit older, but has this whimsical quality about him where, you know, he uh, uh, likes music, likes art, you know, has this uh, magical home. So he's, he's an interesting figure that you could use as, a, as a, a hook for your campaign, definitely, because he's like the kind of person who could just pop in um, deal with the PCs for some reason and then pop out and you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't need to clean out the mess. Um, but yeah, I, th I think he's a, one of Gaius's more interesting creations. Carlos yeah. just got on and said, uh, I was talking about the colorless mage of Paranland. And, and there's silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's his... That's Carl, is that yours? Expertise, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it went dead silent here. <laughs> it's kind of smart. He put in his, his own creation here. And, and yeah. Ah, I, so, uh, <laughs> I thought he was talking about the Witch of Paranland, which is Igwolf, right? Yeah, that's what I thought too. Since yeah. Paranland and, and Medicus were witch, then, then kind of Igwil was the. The obvious. Uh, no, well, now she, he should hop on and explain it himself. Oh, yes. yeah, he needs to. Yeah. You can hop on, Carlos. If you, we're going to run a little late. No, uh, it's not regarding Liam and uh, Carlos. We found out two things. We found out that uh, uh, Leonard created Nistel's magic aura, the spell. Okay, and we also found out that um, um, he also uh, is the creator of the passage of Slaratin. So that we never knew about that, you know. So there you go. Um, the Madge of the Striped Tower. I also find it interesting that there was never, there never seems to have been an occasion where Leoman played in uh, Gygax's Castle Greyhawk campaign. I thought for sure he had, but apparently he but didn't. Exactly, that's what he told us. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like it sounds like Leonard was a was a free wheeler, free agent on his own, and he did his own campaign, and then him and Gary interfaced. Uh, that's yeah. what it sounds like for the most part, and that uh, and that Gary liked Len's ideas so much that he utilized a lot of it, and maybe they played a couple times, but it sounds like for the most part he had his own thing going on the side. So, which yeah. is cool. Yeah, he he wasn't one of the peanut butter honey cracker eaters. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, you got one or two more there. Uh, let's see, Lum the Mad. Oh, geez. yeah. Lum the Mad seems to be this figure out of ancient Oridian history, and we all know his creation from the artifacts uh, section of, D of the first edition DMG. So mm -hmm. who was he? We don't really know. <laughs> but he has a cool name and a cool creation. Okay. Definitely. And he's also crazy, so he follows the tradition really well. So Yeah, yeah it seems like a, uh, one of Zagig's uh, forebearers. Yep. Uh, let's see. Queen Alyssa. A lot of these are coming from the first edition DMG at this point. Yeah. Queen Alyssa, who, along with some figure named Zaggy, with no G on the end, <laughs> okay. invents the Nightingale, which seems to be some kind of clockwork magical beast that uh, is in the first edition DMG. And she is rare among the figures of the past, of the Flan past, in that she is not a lich or a villain. So that's interesting. So when I kind of did research on her for uh, the Living Greyhawk Gazetteer, I said, you know what, I'm going to leave her that way and I'm just going to build on that. And, and basically that's why uh, the Southern Province has left her name on a lot of their land because there's there's just was admirable of this peak of flan civilization which seemed to be a time of you know magic and 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 peace you know not not like the people they discovered in other parts of the of the flanus who seem to be ruled by despots but again we don't know exactly when she lived apparently this nightingale was made about 1700 years ago so pre-migrations we don't know when she died or when the, the realm she led fell. So it's just more uh, hooks, I guess, for people. Very cool. You know who we haven't talked about tonight? We should. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Jalarzi and Mariel. Oh. We really should talk about them. Two of my favorites. 
as well. Uh, I was thinking about that when I went out. My son, some bug was flying around in his room. I'm like, really? Jalarzy doesn't have any spells that I'm aware of. Um, and uh, there's a picture of her in the back. And then I have one other picture of her, Mariel from Dungeon Meister, which I'm going to put up. Um, that's a great picture of Morning Canaan, by the way. Really great picture uh, in that group. Uh, and then this picture here is actually a picture of Rari. They killed him in the campaign. So that lying down body, that's Rari. That's the only picture I, uh, that he had of, of yeah. Rari, unfortunately. Um, and then this is Jalarzi on the far left, then a player character named Lorha Lee, and then Mariel behind, and then next to Otto, which we didn't talk about either. So there you go. So uh, really cool. Um, I don't know the, where, um, how Jalarzi was created. Was that a Gary uh, Gygax creation there, Gary? Do you know uh, where Jalarzi came no, from? No, she, um, she was a creation of the people who wrote the uh, City of Greyhawk box set. Okay, okay. So she came just from the City Greyhawk box set, basically. Yeah, so she could have been she could have been Sergeant because he collaborated on that. Um, I love Julia. Yeah. It says Carl Sergeant and Rick Rose. Yeah, so it could be Rick Rose. Okay. Uh, and the gem of the fast was Douglas Niles, but that was more um, that was more specific uh, locations. All right. Well, and then Mariel is her uh, friend, and uh, Anna's has played. I'm, her a, I'm not a big fan. No. No, I think it's a, she's she's a little too cute. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think? I've never used her in a campaign. I love the character, but that's okay. Yeah, it's, yeah I think it's, it's kind of cool to, to have something that that goes against the, the general trend of, of – meaning we don't have that many cute wizards. We have more <laughs> – yeah, especially females, they usually go in the witch category. So it would be cool, cool to have something that is kind of a non-witch – so, uh, that's true. That's true. I created a whole female uh, wizard group. Oh, and you just linked and it? And my blog called the Pentad. includes Meryl. Uh-huh. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Oh, look at that. Yeah. How many of you guys have used those apprentices from uh, Vecna Lives in your campaign? Just Mariel, no, right? I She's in that, isn't she? Yeah. So actually, Mariel has a relationship with Tim's dad's character, Abdul Amir. He's a cl the Clark Mage Grey uh, Half Elf uh, that uh, Tim's dad John uh, played that night during that fundraiser. And that's last, you know, John doesn't play that much anymore. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty interesting. But uh, this is an interesting article. I got to take a look at this. Oh, yeah, Fiona Fiona Aristotle here too. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm go yeah definitely. I'm gonna link. I'm gonna. I'm gonna save that one. That's, that's Gosh, that. That does sound like Sergeant with all those syllables. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jalarzy Salivarian. It does. Um, cool. So uh, hopefully we we've gone we've gone through a fair number of them tonight. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, spells. The original circle all have spells in multiple locations. I think one thing that's a little upsetting is the next generation don't have their own spells. Like Alamazad uh, uh, doesn't have his own spells. Jalarzy doesn't have any spells. I think that's kind of missed out. I, I, I would like that they would have. Even Melf's got two spells, right? Yeah. You know, you know Melf has two. Sp I would lo love to have some uh, named name spells. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's good. It's definitely one of Greyhawk's unique contributions to D and D. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And one of the reasons why they probably can't break D uh, Greyhawk off from D and D and sell it or license it. Oh, because ah, you could take the rip the name right out. Well, that's what Pathfinder, what the Paiso did yeah. in Pathfinder, but the, the, you lose some of the connection because everyone knows it's Tasha's hideous laughter, not just hideous laughter. It makes more fun if the spell has an origin, so to speak. So, so it's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I um. I don't know. I just it's it's the, the number one thing that drew that draws me to that Greyhawk Adventures book. I said that with the Jim Ward interview is it's brilliant. All those named, all of them. Jay, yes. Did you see Carlos's um, link? Is he in the backstage? I I probably missed it because I was out there with my son. Uh, where is what did he link? How far back? No, he he tried to join the chat. Oh, geez. I, 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 oh, oh, Carlos, I was at my son uh, called me away. 
I'm sorry, Carlos. That's what happened. Um, Dan. Yeah. I, I, um, if, yeah. Uh, shit. Yeah, uh, that stinks. I don't know if he knew. I didn't see it. I sent, uh, yeah, plus it's up top, too. Yeah, I, I never saw it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, Carlos, please, man, hop, you can hop. My apologies. I, I was out of the room, and it probably was when, when that had happened, when Gary was talking. I had to run out of the room. My son uh, called me away for something uh, of life or death situation. Uh, there was a, a moth flying around his room. He thought it was some crazy spider. So there you go. So I had to, I had to deal with that. So please feel free to hop on. Um, that was my, my apologies on that. Um, pretty good, uh, pretty good going through of a, a lot of, uh, this is yeah. a good, it's a, it's a good topic that we can, uh, we can do different priests and fighters and, uh, yeah, Slayer of Ma I'm a Slayer of something. Yep. Let me tell you, here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, awesome. Here, here he comes. Oh, we know what we did. Well, we always talk, we didn't talk about Marquesa either. Nope. Hey, hey Carlos. Are you, are you home? What's the highest level she's achieved? You, are you at work, Carlos? Hey, guys. hey yeah, man. I'm good here. I mean, oh, cool. You cool. guys, uh, you, you summoned me, so I, uh, yeah. so I, yes. I was uh, compelled mm -hmm. to, to arrive. What's, oh, so, what's going on? Tell us about the colorless major parent land. Well, the colorless major parent land is a character that I played uh, since about the uh, 79, I would say. Uh, he's just He's the lens through which I tell all the stories on my Patreon. And a lot of my modules. That's all. Okay. So I, I was. It was more of a joke that I brought him up than anything. You'll be seeing him appear in, in Fireland. That's oh, all. It's oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, I did. I did bring up another spellcaster though that I wouldn't mind talking about. Who is the uh, Mage of the Striped Tower? Did you, you remember him? No. Mage of the Striped Tower was a wizard that was in the city of Greyhawk, uh, and I think that Mike. Bridges remembers him well because I think if I remember correctly, he showed up in the uh, Castle Greyhawk comic, right? Uh, yes, but yeah. that was more Scott Casper's writing than, okay. you know, I was more just taking the art direction on that. You often hear uh, Gary talk about how he used to liberate gold and things from his, uh, his uh, players through stuff like uh, Flesh to Stone and things like that. Well, the, the Mage of the Strike Power was the one that was turning everybody back to flesh that was getting um, that was getting petrified and things like that. So he was the big vector through which people would uh, through which uh, some of the um, the gold and the magic items would be uh, taken away from players. Oh. So he he's a he's a big one, and actually his canon reference is in he has a very very small canon reference, which is in um, the outdoor geomorphs set really uh, actually, wow that's there's like there's like 15 locations in the back of that that are actually city of greyhawk uh references and they he appears in that that's pre-greyhawk box set so that's really old canon that's yeah cool. man that's really old canon obscure canon right there but so it is that's cool well i, I had to, if i'm going to show up i had to bring out something like <laughs> that you know absolutely <laughs> um we didn't even get to uh the guild of wizardry Karen Jalushian, Kadratus Bubka, uh, all those. We didn't even talk. Uh, yeah. Jawal Severine, we didn't talk to uh, any we of those. We could have brought Karen Jalushian up right away because he actually does tie into the Circle of Eight through Jalarzin. He recommends her? No, they're an item. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Awesome. And Jalushian is. I can't remember his exact level, but he is powerful enough. He could have been in the circle. He's, I think he's like, what, 16th to 18th? 18th, I think. I thought I had it here. But yeah. with his position, I don't know why he would want to leave that. Yeah, I think that that's else. more. I think you're right, Mike. I think more than anything, it's just uh, a matter of why would he want to even, what would his motivation be to do that? It doesn't Eight, make sense. 18th. He's a big boy, six foot three. Yeah, has a carpet of flying. Oh yeah, there it is. Our dining at the Golden Phoenix. Ooh, all right, cool. Uh, that's something. Uh, something I uh, m missed by going through, and I thought I knew these books back with the back of my hand. I missed that, so pretty cool. 
So, Carlos, you got any others uh, there? That, uh, we went. We uh, well, we could, there's so many of the spellcasters that are, are obscure that I'm going to guess you haven't touched on, like the Weird of the Nat Marsh. Are you familiar with her? <sighs> no. The yes. Weird of the Nat Marsh is the okay. uh, is the is the witch that was uh, was actually how um, Warren Starcoat made his claim to fame by defeating the Weird of the Nat Marsh, who was in uh, in the Ernst States probably at the behest of Countess Felicica. Um, you could also bring up Thingizard, who makes an appearance in, um, is, she's pretty obscure, she makes an appearance in White Plume Mountain. Uh, yep. She's a witch and she's known for potion brewing. So that's another one that you could bring up that I think maybe you guys might not have, uh, have mentioned. Very cool. Thanks to her, thanks to her relative obscurity. Um, another one that I really like is Porfirio. Porfirio from um, UK One, which is uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Crystal Cave. Yeah, uh, he is the uh, one of the titular characters there that's that is uh, responsible for uh, for creating uh, the land beyond the Crystal Cave. If we go that route, I go Nuala from Ravager of Time. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you can do that always. Oh um, man, I do know this. If we're talking about you know your um, your, your, your high level wizards in the world of Greyhawk. I think it's a. I had an opportunity the last the other night. I was playtesting my mod, my new upcoming module um, to the City of the Elder Gods, which, by the way, Eli Tomorost is a uh, is an excellent choice for that uh, the list too. But um, I got a chance in that to play the Circle of Eight because the players are represent their agents of the Circle of Eight, um, and that was. So, sometimes I think we forget what a great vector to adventure those characters really are within our own campaigns. Mm -hmm. Role-playing them was so much fun. I mean, it was something I've always wanted to do, and I, I got a chance to scratch that itch by, uh, by running that. It was, it was just really a lot of fun. Awesome. I appreciate you hopping on, knowing you're at work, Carlos. And sorry, like I said my, yeah. my I was on a bug hunt. So. <laughs> oh no, it's, it's it's absolutely no problem, man. I uh, like I said, I know I'm getting on late here. I just you, you mentioned it's that you, yeah. you wouldn't mind me have, having me on, so nah. I well, gotta I, jump I, on and get tricky as best I could. So, I got a quick yeah. story for Carlos, which should make you happy. So sure. there's a chat going on in Greyhawk Online, and a guy, a gentleman, I can't remember his name, comes on. Uh, I think Puppet helped him, and he goes, I have all these areas near Saltmarsh and Keeland, but I can't find any reference. What is this Dun Mounds on Anna's map? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. People are asking now, Carlos. I was yeah, like, well, you know, That's awesome. actually, Jay, so interesting you should bring this up right now because I'm actually um, – that is now on the horizon. It's yes. actually it's actually something that is, is I'm going to be working on soon. But cool. I realized something really um, something actually really salient about that project that you and I have never really even thought of. We can't call it horror in the holes, bro. We, we got to call it horror in the marshes. Right, I know. Yeah, we can't so call it the holes <laughs> marshes. That's right. The, the marshland horror or something like that. <laughs> yes. So we're gonna have to talk about what we're really gonna do. <laughs> I, I was thinking about that too. I'm like, oh shit, that's a name implication. I, I can't believe it. That I think I, you know, it's one of those things that you don't expect the project to, to have that kind of a reach, and then next yeah. thing you know, you're figuring out how you're going to shoehorn it into in a continuity. That's yeah. pretty awesome, though, that we have that problem to begin with. But I just yeah, thought yeah, you got a kick out of that story sure. that someone asked specifically about mm -hmm. that in Keelan. A lot yeah, of them were living great yeah, references. But it also, you know, it's it's a testimony to to what we've accomplished here without wizard support for yeah. example yeah you wrote it and i wrote it and we're putting things around it but anna legitimized it by putting it on her map the discord is actually spreading the word i mean there's so many components of our community that are involved in, in spreading the word on it yeah. and i think that um i think that it, it's important to to acknowledge the fact that you know this is even though you and i had you know maybe we're putting the words down on it it's, it really does belong to the community. That's it, man. And that's the great yeah. thing is that it's, it, it's, it's, it's yeah. an honor to, to just, 
you know, get something on Adam's map, and then for oh, it to become yeah. part of part of published source, the published source of our community, right? Not the published source of T, of of TSR or of Hasbro or Wizards, but our ours. And that's a real that's a real honor. And that's kind of like uh, hopefully with this discussion tonight, uh, we got everyone got some ideas on on making their yeah. own published source. And that's what it is about being a DM. You know, Carlos is different than mine's. It's different than Anna's. It's different than Gary's. Different than Mike's. Right? It's all. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, but that's part of the community, and that's a great thing. It's a starting point. Yeah. People come here for starting points on setting up, uh, setting up great well, campaigns. Well, also, I think something that's really cool about the whole thing is this. Um, you know, it's like television or movies or anything. You're not going to like every movie that's out there, every television show that's out there. But the fact that there are multiple ones out there gives you choice. You get to find the one that you like that speaks to you personally. Yeah. And I think that that's really, um, I think that's really cool that we have that now in the community. There's so many voices out there and with publication becoming so much easier and with shows like your, yours or Blue Boxes or my own or, mm -hmm. or you know, the fact that we've gotten uh, Cannon Fire on the Discord and, and Greyhawk mm -hmm. online, there's so many voices out there right now and it's, we, we talk about it all the time about, but this is, a, it's another golden age for me. You know, yeah. I think that says this, Greyhawk has never been more accessible. It just falls to us as its custodians to make sure that, you know, that, that we keep it that way and we keep it in the forefront of gamers' minds. Yeah. I am really excited about all of us participating in, in five weeks. I'm so excited about it at this point. Just the, all the uh, 12 Twitch channels in, involved now. I mean, think about that, you know, tournaments, awesome. tournaments, seminars, uh, great streamers, great DM, Scott Casper's DMing something, right? You know, it's just uh, also um, Chantel just put it in a couple games. Uh, uh, so that, that, that up to 60. Right, so we got sixty events in there, and you know Gary playing. Oh, by the way, Gary, have you decided your specialty priest yet? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Gary. We all know you're going to choose Hack Store. Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, let's be honest. I shared my secret specialty priest list with Gary the other day, saying, "Hey, man, uh, yeah." So, um, uh oh, you need another. What's yeah. the matter? No evil characters, remember? Yeah, no evil it characters. It doesn't have to be evil to be Hexstor. Yeah, he could be lawful neutral. Oh. No, I'm thinking Heronius <laughs> or something. You could just worship like that, another so. one of his hexstores, <laughs> right, Gary? <laughs> That's funny. So Eric's supposed to get back with me with what character he's going to, what crazy character he's going to do in old school. I suggested a Len Lakofka archer for him, but he said, ah, maybe I'll do that, but we'll see. So he's going to yeah. dig, dig deep. So fun, yeah. fun time. So, uh, Carlos, why don't you, uh, you want to start our closeouts here and, uh, thanks for coming on. What would you like to say in closing? Um, nothing, man. I, uh, like I said, I just, I jumped on. I'm it was uh, awesome. right now. The next project for me is going to be the net, the conclusion of the uh, play test for, uh, the city of the elder gods, which we're publishing. Uh, it should be really, yeah, it should be really exciting. Mike, I can't wait for you to see it. So you can either give me your, uh, your, your two claws up or two claws down on it. Right. Um, and uh, besides that, I'm looking forward to virtual Greyhawk kind of like the rest of us. It's going to be a great event that's going to bring the community together. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just pleased to be a part of it. Just wait. To, I can't wait to see what ringers Tim puts you through. You and Anna. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I, I'm, I'm preparing a special surprise for Tim. <laughs> hey, yeah. I, I've, I've written a kind of uh, a very extensive backstory for my character. So it's, it's, <sighs> Yeah, Corey, you missed Leonard Lakofka, too. And like I said, Leonard put out some unbelievable mm -hmm. information tonight. You know, Anna, actually, you know what we really need to do? All of us that are a part of this, we need to, like, do a Facebook chat uh, oh, yeah, group or something so we can and, plot and... against Tim because we're really going to yeah. need to have a, yeah, we need to a special Discord. We have to have a Zoom yeah. meeting or, or something. and, and We buttons. really do yeah. need to, to put something together here because yep. – you know what Tim's reputation is. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. uh, he he is he is he has given me some tidbits as to what's about to go. I can't. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to ruin it. I'm just going to produce it and sit back and enjoy. Put my feet up and watch and laugh, and then maybe give him some cheers and laugh <laughs> <laughs> and laugh because Tim is a little crazy. You know that, but it'll it'll be fun. It'll be great. It'll be a great way to kick off that Saturday morning. So. Yeah. Um, um, Carlos, I really appreciate you hopping on, on, on and giving us some information there about uh, um, a couple of uh, 
of wizards that I would have never thought of. So, uh, yeah, and yeah. discussing. I, it's, it's, I wish I could have gotten it earlier because this is kind of my obscure wizards of Greyhawk is kind of my specialty, but oh well. <laughs> Well, we're going to keep these going. I got some great news coming up for uh, some future new. Um, I'll talk about that too during announcements, but I've, I've kind of tied up a couple other names. By the way, names. Uh, that just reminded me of something. Um, uh, Gary, did we talk about uh, Linward the Spinner? No. Or Lorwind the Spinner, I should say? No, we, we, we've, we've got like dozen, a dozen characters we could still bring okay. up. Okay. Go for it. I knew that. I just thought that 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 uh, deep uh, Great Kingdom lore reference would 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 uh, warm your little heart. Yeah, that's a that's a, We didn't even we hardly touched scratch the surface on Sergeant's <laughs> creation. <laughs> and then there's oh, all those wizards up mention, that I use. We did yeah. mention Philidor. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Sars Tale yeah. uh, did that one, but you know we could do a spe specific entire show on personalities in the Great Kingdom. Right, I yeah. Mean, which is probably a one we should do because I don't know anything about it. We, we've I'm, done Great Kingdom so long ago that we need to go back. Yeah, again. so that was I something think, that Mike and me did a long time ago. I know what you need to do too. I, I I'm, I'm going to make a request of you, Jay. Okay. Find a way to get Gitano to appear on the show so he can talk Sundi. Okay. Yeah. He is doing so many cool things with Sundi right now that you see. I'm sure some of you have seen on Facebook and things like mm -hmm. that. I've talked to him in the past. I want him to get a little bit of shine and talk about that, yeah, so that he that can be uh, because I think he's he's a great voice for our um, for for our community, and I think people need to hear what he brings to the table because it's awesome. He's a great creator. No problem. We can do that. We could do uh, we could do Gitano and have a couple others on and with uh, some key elements that they've done as well and uh, and and have a fun time with it. So uh, there you go, Gitano. Great shout out for you, um, and that's a great idea because uh, uh, Sunday is an area there's not much written up on. Was it was Sunday a big area in Living Greyhawk? Anyone know? I don't, no, I don't think it was that it big, been, but it might have been assigned to Europe, right? Okay. Yeah, I think so. The yeah. ID in Neri that was next door was the Scandinavian country. But so I, I don't know if Sunday was uh, somewhere in Europe too. But I, I, I but I mean, all you got to say is Tomb of Horrors. I mean, good yeah. lord, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, all the history and everything in there. I mean, as, as beloved as that area is, oh, that's, Belgium, yeah, Belgium. Oh it's man, it's yeah. that, that it's just ripe for everything, and and we yeah. couldn't. We're lucky. We're actually very fortunate as a community that a dude like Gitano has taken that area under his wing. It's it's cool. awesome yeah. to hear that the areas are yeah. being developed. They got Rotic being developed. You got Belmarch being developed. You have stuff all over the you know place, which is which is fantastic. Because um, you know, I always feel like I'm pigeonholed in like three or four locations, and then you know everyone else has got their own things, and it's good to bring it all together and and discuss it. And that, that is always an awesome thing. So. City of Rollmore, was that in the Great Kingdom? Yes, right? Well, yeah. Uh, Nyrond. Nyrond. Yeah. Nyrond, yeah. they're Canadian. It was in the go. Great Kingdom when it was founded, but then yeah. it became the yeah. capital. But, it's, it's not Mond, it's Rollmore. Oh, oh, yeah. He, it's, yeah, Realm. yeah. I think that's the one he refers to. So, yeah. All right. So, so, we're going to do it. I'm writing this down. We're going to do that Sunday, and we're going to do our personalities of, uh, personalities of the Great Kingdom, past and present. I think that's a good one. Yeah. And then we need to do something about I use again in the future too. Yes, but we got a lot of stuff coming up. We also oh, have well, a, that's, we, you got you got to draft Casey Brown for that chat. I mean, oh, yeah. he, I think if he didn't, if he if you didn't draft him, he would hack his way into the server mm -hmm. and and force himself into that chat. Yep, yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have another Living Greyhawk group coming on uh, uh, soon, so I think we have Nyron. Uh, where was uh, um, French? Was that Nyron? Who had uh, Nyron? French were Ick. No, that Onwall. was Ekbeer. Onwall. Ek Who had Ekbeer, Onwall? Wasn't it? I thought so, French was Ekbeer. Onwall was a UK. We, yeah, we have, France we, is Ekbeer. We have, we have Onwall coming on, I believe, next month. Okay. So I'll get cool. with Casey yep. on that. Casey, if you're yep. on, I know he's bouncing on and off, but we do have, we have a foreign uh, element coming on again, and that'll be a really good discussion for in September. So lots of great announcements uh, coming up. Mike, what would you like to uh, close out with? Well, I got a lot of good ideas for cool. articles on this. I only wish I was uh, more adept at creating spells. It, it, creating spells that are balanced is tough. 
Yeah. It's tough to play balance, play test balance spells. It is. <clears throat> it's a tough thing to do. Yeah. May I, I uh, interject about sure. creating balance spells for a moment? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Spell casting, when you're doing spell research, it usually would come in, in, in the context of a game as if you were a player, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to be 12 level. You're going to start researching your own spells. Why the hell would you want to create a balanced spell? I'm trying to milk as something as nasty as I possibly can that's as imbalanced as possible. <laughs> Because once it gets out in books and all, then you have to deal with the repercussions in your game. I right? know, I'm uh, just messing about yeah. it. Reality <laughs> is one thing, but, uh, but uh, you know, can you imagine? Uh, I got, oh, I did an improved magic missile. It's die eight plus one instead of die four plus one per level. Uh, yeah, if, uh, first level. Got to remember, what I had to deal with for 40 years, Carlos, is I got to put a rain reins on these guys or, or the abuse goes way out of hand. I mean, and you just... I knew that the second you told me you didn't give out gauntlets of ogre power anymore. When you told me that, I knew right away that you had some player chicanery going on. Yeah, there. absolutely. I mean, uh, it just it, the, with double specialization and all the other stuff going on, man, you're talking about plus like 15 damage per hit. It's, oh, a, yeah. it's insanity. Oh, yeah. It's absolute insanity. So I'm glad, I'm glad, Mike, you got a lot out of this discussion. This has been a blast. Uh, so, Anna, what do you think on the closing uh, out on this uh, topic? Uh, well, when it comes to spells, uh, I've, I've done the spells I've created have primarily been utility spells of all sorts that has nothing to do with combat or things, things that are good, that are used in society for, for ideas of how, how you mix magic seals that can be used in contracts and stuff, various spells that can be used for identification and, and various spells to find out things that rulers use and stuff like that. So that's been what I put most on my, because all the, the combat combat and the adventuring stuff, it's so well covered. So I want to cover areas that are normally not used so much, but it's necessary. Meaning if you have high powered magic and stuff, how wouldn't you, rulers would make that make use of it in in order to to run their kingdoms, to further their agenda, to protect and from and stuff like that. So that's where I put most of my spell creation efforts into that. Areas that are kind of sadly need but a lot of campaigns don't need it because the style of play does but my campaigns need that stuff to, in order to function so that's why i created a lot of them i can imagine in the pathfinder game itself it, it probably helps out too right oh yeah the pathfinder also have some new kind of inventions when it comes to to spell and also the the uh, it's like third 3.5 but more detailed when it comes to the spell schools and stuff you have sub schools for for summoning conjuration and, and stuff like that it's like In third alchemy, edition but yeah, it, yeah it, but a little bit more further refined so to speak so so it's it, that's kind of really interesting that you've gone deeper and also, I one spellcaster that I've played a, a lot of, of that I've used as a, one of my major villains, kind of NPC, kind of quest giver, is uh, Lord Vuron, and and, and oh. he's a demon lord, but he is also a very high-powered wizard, and yeah. he's a diviner of, of of universal, some of the probably the highest standing in the multiverse, so to speak. He's a very, very, very powerful. There are few secrets he can't find, so to speak. So, so that so so he is highly intelligent, very patient, and very curious. He's more curious than he's evil, and and more curious than he's greedy. He 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 kind of lets the the greediness and and the the evilness and stuff to his 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 lord and and Grasitz. But but he uh, but he's kind of. The, the ones that want to know how things work in the in the and and figure things out so to speak so he's kind of cool and he's very i've given him some interesting uh, special spells and stuff and and also you can have special skills and arcane um, capabilities in the form of feats that's also another cool thing you can do in pathfinder you can give feats and stuff so if you cast detect magic for instance if you have certain skills and feats and stuff you can do more with the detect magic than you can do if you're just a regular caster of it so so there's more dimension to it that way that that the rule set kind of open up so i, I kind of made that in it so when you're really high powered you can you can use detect magic if you cast it over as a ritual over time you can use it for miles not close by, so to speak. So you can detect high-level spells being cast many miles away. So so and 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 various other effects like that. So so and then you have to cloak your casting. Then you can use various tweaks and stuff for that. So high power magic becomes 
much more political and much more risky, but also more rewarding because you can really alter the world if you do it, but it's very risky because if you start throwing wishes and, and really high powered ninth level magic around, the high and mighty will find you and they will come after you. Yeah, either wow. to recruit you or kill you. <laughs> yeah. Either or. Um, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to go. Um, yeah. Carlos, thanks. Awesome. Thank no you problem. so much before, for coming. Before on. I do, I wanted to say something, though. Uh, Anna, I hope you're feeling better. Are you okay? Oh, yes. I, oh, yeah. I feel much better. So thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I just want, I was a little worried about you. That's all. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. You guys have a good evening. Okay? Carlos, thank you so yeah. very Bye, much. Carlos. No problem. Bye now. Bye. Bye bye. Awesome. He came on. Yeah. So, Gary, what do you have to say in closing here? And thank you for coming on, too. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I was getting sick of typing. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I view the great spellcasters and all these NPCs as more fodder for the lore of my campaign. I really don't use them as actual NPCs okay. for people to encounter, except in the most unusual circumstances. So uh, I don't want that Forgotten Realms creep to start to get into my Greyhawk where people start to view the NPCs as more important than the, the players themselves. So. But, you know, it's great because you've got all these, you've got generations of spellcasters over the, over the centuries. Some you could use as complete background and some that, you know, maybe affect the campaign um, even in the modern era. So I, I think Greyhawk has a rich history as far as that's concerned, probably richer than any other setting. Yeah. Uh, imagine, I'm, I'm just going back in time here. I know Mike's pet looks like he's about to pass out. Imagine if... Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2, we actually had an equivalent of them in Greyhawk and those computer games back then and how much hype they created, you yeah. know, and then and then I know Gary had the books, but imagine we had a freaking R.A. Salvatore of our own. What would have happened? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right then and there, you know, I'm not a fan of, just it's great, but uh, man, it's so overdone, but, you know, hey, it's, it's, it's entertaining, so... Just a what if situation. Is two E Toma Magic a regular magic media source coma eight oh eight? Yes. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend the player's option for second book. If you want to create a specialty priest coma, you need the player's option book because all the different spheres of clerical are in there, and that's your base starting point. I go over that in a gab in uh it's uh, in the past. So both books. I would highly recommend getting both of them. You don't need the second edition player's handbook if you have the first edition player's handbook and the Arthur Kana, but you definitely need um, Toma Magic and uh, and the player's option book. Absolutely. Great question. Mike, uh, why don't we uh, close it out with your shout outs here? What do you got going on? Well, let's see. I'm uh, probably going to be starting up uh, a campaign in the Barbarian Lands. Nice. I, last Sunday, I uh, we had a, what we thought was a one-shot. Um, I ran a uh, quick uh, thing up in the ice Barbarian Lands um, with uh, an outbreak of gibberlings. That was fun. Uh, and then found out that the... DM that uh, was going to be running for us on Sunday, if we ever got back to playing regularly, just uh, can I commit to it? So my barbarian campaign might become the new thing. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> That's awesome. <clears throat> but otherwise, blogging, and I'm working on something for Work Journal. That's awesome. It. Yeah. Great to hear. Anna. Uh, well, it's the Atlas again. Uh, the index is on my Patreon page. The the the, the raw uh, version. It's an Excel spreadsheet with all the names from my map. Uh, it wasn't that many that I thought. It was like five thousand or something like that. I think uh, on the the map. That there will be. We have to double some of them because we have to a few of them should be found under different so you have the kingdom of should be on on k and on the whatever and same thing with provinces and stuff so there will be probably about ten thousand or eight thousand or something like that when we when we're finally done with it and and so that is there so you can kind of check spelling and see if something is forgotten we found out a few errors in that that needs to be put in there and I also put uh, started to do the overview map. So I just posted to my patrons today a first kind of take on the overview map because there is some issues with the formatting and stuff. So I had to kind of crop some areas and stuff. So 
once I have that figured out, so I know the, um, the, the format for the overview map, the political map, and, and some of the other ones, that, that way I can I'd start producing them. So that will be the next couple of weeks that will come out with, with the political map, the overview map, and, and, and some of the other map, and the legends, and the legend, and, and some of the other stuff that kind of rounds out the, the atlas. So the atlas is in on the, the, the home stretch soon. So only a, a few more weeks and, and it will be done. Cool. And I'm also working on my my campaign stuff for my own campaign. The the shield land map is is coming forward. It's starting to get its textures and stuff. So that will hopefully there will be some some more or less finished parts of it to 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 show off on the the um, for my seminar. So what the new generation and what my players can look forward to in in my campaign. Uh, to have a, a map that is stretching about a hundred miles or so in each direction from from around the will be the southern shield land will be detailed down to five feet per pixel, so so that will that will be that will be a, a new breed of, of maps that starting to look really really cool, and also the um, let's see there's some other stuff that I'm working on. Yeah, the climate map and stuff I looked in I, it's not ready for to publish anything but I'm sketching further on the earth and and the the climate map that is coming in too and the GIS project is a little bit in the back burner but there is a whole range of features and stuff that I want to do with it and I found some very very interesting technical solutions for mapping using GIS and also to tie in game engines into it so there is a yeah there's so many cool things I want to start testing this winter and next year that I'm just going nuts to, to, to start doing it. But the problem with this is that one builds on something else. So, so you have to do the raw data and then you have to take it into the next thing. So I always want to go out and, and do finishing touches on something. The problem is that you have to build the groundwork first and, and no things. So there's a whole bunch of things, but there, there will be after the Atlas is finally done and, and I can kind of put, a, 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 put an end to that project that has been going on now for, for months then I can start moving on to, to newer, greener pastures that will, be, that will be interesting. So there's a whole bunch of it. And also my campaign map for the seminar is getting a lot of love. That's something I work on an hour or two every day to, to update it and put stuff in there. And, and, and I put notes and down for explanations. And that one will come out a few days before my seminar. So you will have a chance to study it and come up with interesting questions and wonder, what the hell did she think when she did that? And, and stuff <laughs> like that. So, so, so there will be stuff like that. So we can discuss, so you can hammer me with the weird questions and stuff to, to see what kind of weird things I'm coming up with. Great show for Friday night, yeah. gonna be awesome. Thank you, Anna. Gary. Well, I've got about a week to finish an OJ34 article. So that's going to be introducing a new god to the Pantheon, Ooh. or at least a, a god that has never been fully described, a demigod, um, the, the greatest nemesis of St. Cargoth. So, um, Hainer, can, to the, Hainer to the White Guard? No, but a friend, a friend. Ah. So I, I will be talking about the White Guard. Okay. So it's gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's Saint Benedor, who is the patron saint of the Great Kingdom's, you know, wh what's left of its noble and good past. So oh, that's um, awesome, Gary. That's an awesome, awesome article. Ooh, and it's oh all my. gonna be, it's all gonna be first edition. <laughs> Even better! Oh, oh, look at that! Not so you good. are gonna get you're gonna get God stats. You're gonna be able to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> you want to play a specialty priest to him? Uh, you can, and uh, we'll, I'll, I'll have the stats by then. That might be amusing. That might be amusing. That might be amusing. Uh, once it's submitted and Christoph approves, it, you want to send me the notes, and we'll work up the spell list. I mean, there you go. That would be okay. a good. That would be a good way to announce this character with authority to everyone out, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that class, um, that uh, deity, and all. So think about that. That's great. That's fantastic. Oh so my. the other th the other thing I'm working on, but which is going to have to be on pause for a week, is a bot for my Discord channel, the Cannon Fire channel, that is going to allow you to search Jason's index by just calling up a command. Oh, cool. You can also call up a. You're going to be able to call up a command and get 
a piece of Anna's map that relates to the kingdom that you're asking for. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Posted directly in the chat. So if you're having a discussion with someone and you want to sh talk about something, a city or a place, and you really don't want to go look for it and post it, you're going to be able to do that automatically. Wow. Wow. So, <laughs> so, wow. So, once I become a master of bots, uh, whatever features people want, we'll work on. That is so cool. Yep. Got a great, great um, information. All right, I'll, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. But you know, I've this is only my second straight show here uh, tonight. <laughs> so tomorrow night, it's a big night for two reasons. We finish up uh, Adventure Eight Eighty Seven Mystery of the Forge, the Great and uh, Army, the last remnant of it's finally been defeated after all this time in the Principal Yulik. But the mystery is why is this town uh, uh, forged run in the Principal Yulik abandoned, and where did these apparitions of these dwarves come that helped them in the fight? So there you go, and that's that's going to be the mystery, uh, which we'll get to this week coming up, and Gamescape 3D's first giveaway event. So we've got some great great STL files for you. Uh, hopefully, uh, the winners have 3D printers. But um, just note this: he shouted it out to his community and we got like 30 followers in the last three or four days off of it. So we're joining the community's getting bigger and bigger. Um, so um, I'm looking forward to that now Sunday. This, this is going to be broken into multiple shows. I just know it. I don't think this is going to, this is going to happen uh, in one show. Uh, character classes in dragon magazine. All right, you ready for this? I'll go through this real fast. Archer, Bandit, Barbarian Cleric, Cavalier, Duelist, Elven Cavalier, Guardian, Incantatrix, Jester, Improved Monk, Cavalier Paladin, Sentinel, Witch, uh, Deathmaster, Anti-Paladin, uh, Certain Bards, The Smith, Mystics, Entertainers. I know I missed some. All right, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to that in two hours. So, um, And we don't use all of them, but we're going to talk about as many classes as we can that were published in Dragon. A lot of them I utilize particularly the Duelist and the Cavalier over the Antarcana, but we, we can talk about that. i got Anna and Leonard, and the ever-mysterious Tim hasn't committed, but he will probably be on because he uh, you know uses a lot of them as well. All right, so next week's Legends and Lore. Right up Mike's alley with his new campaign that he's going to run, yeah. Barbarians of oh. the North. What do you yeah. know? What do you we know? Go, we go anti-magic, so to speak. Yes. We go anti wizards. We're yeah. gonna go barbarians of the north here. So yeah. um, we'll have that discussion from the paint plains of the paintings to the rovers of the barons to the uh, oh I don't even know what yeah, I'm talking about. Stonefist. Yep. The tiger wolf nomads and all the barbarian states. There we go. So, Jay, I don't know if uh, you're, you're able to swing this, but David Leonard is an expert on this area. He's written a lot of great stuff recently, too. Yep, awesome. To All if, right, we well, if, so, if, we can, if we can get him to stay up a little bit later. Oh, yeah, he needs to. He needs to take a vacation. I think uh, I think he will. If we if I specifically yeah. ask him, um, he yep. will definitely uh, come on for this. That so awesome. let's, we'll yep. ask David um, to come on for this show, and hopefully he can uh, just uh, take some methamphetamine mm. or something. There you go. Yep. All right. Awesome. So that'll be next week. Now, coming up shortly after that, um, the day after that, look at this. I got the schedule all worked out. This is massive for the, for my channel. ReaperCon Live We online. We are the kickoff RPG for the entire con. Uh, Return of the Portal Master. It's going to be a really, it's going to be a just a showcase of, of, of Reaper miniatures that we're going to do this. It'll be a big, high-level free-for-all fight for the most part. But that'll be Thursday. Four major giveaways uh, up for Reaper that night. It probably, I'm hoping it could be a record audience for me. Uh, we'll see what I'm excited about. They asked me to do this. And uh, that's show number one for us. So we have a Saturday morning fun show. A bonus gab in number 107. Uh, modding and customizing minis. That's Saturday morning, 9 a.m. I'll have a gabbing on Sunday of Labor Day weekend as well that evening. With this one, I'll have Mike Disney, Build a Master Crafter on, and they're going to show us that you don't need Hero Forge minis to customize and some tricks of the trade. So that'll be also ReaperCon live online as well. And then announcements. I don't have dates, but I've gotten yeses and commitments from Jason Bullman and James Jacobs both to come on. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So there you go. So we will have 
I may have one of them as early as, as that Sunday of Labor Day weekend. Uh, I may. So, yes, you like that? You like that? Da, na, 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 na. So, um, I just got to set some dates for them. It, guys and gals, probably Sunday nights for both. Okay, it would be Gabbins. It seems like that works better for people with work, work schedules. So, um, yeah. you, you'll probably have them both for Sunday nights. And uh, that'll take us almost right into Reaper uh, to uh, Greyhawk Con. You know, we got a lot of stuff going on. So, I know I missed some things uh, to talk about, but that's okay. Because it's... Uh, Wow, this show almost went three hours. It did go three hours from where yeah, we started. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you, Leonard. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, audience, for coming on, hanging in, in here tonight. It was a great uh, great time. I promise I'll do more stuff with Blue Box's show because we just seem to connect as far as our, our campaigns go and on the rules and things we talk about. So we'll keep that we'll keep that going um, as much as I can mentally stay stay erect here and alive yeah. uh and but thank you jay for for producing this and putting all the pieces together that's, well thanks thank big, you big 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 big, big, big job yeah. yeah 60 events 60 virtual greyhawk con events now 19 are sold out um so and 11 of them were were uh streams that never had sign up so we're about 50 percent capacity right now there's still 30 events to sign up for it's nominal thank you Yep, 60 events now. So please, and we're going to have more, it sounds like. I think Daniel Delta Collins from uh, Wandering DMs is going to do something. Uh, by the way, I can't tell you how Anna and Will and Brian and, and uh, the Naz and I did on the Big Bad. Let's just no, say, we can't, we can't, we can't say that. anything about it till the show comes out. So just say it was five. I played 5e for the fourth time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, had fun, though. we had a great time. We had a great yep. time. And that's not to say we failed. You just have to wait and see. There will yep. be an award show too in that. So, all right. Uh, who's on the raid into? Uh, we'll probably do Praetors tonight. Let's do Praetors Rejects tonight. So, uh, uh, there you go. Executive decision made. See you tomorrow night for uh, so a great giveaway and a, and a really cool storyline um, for. Uh, let me make sure I do this right. Uh, hit the right button, Jay. Hit the right <laughs> button. There we go. Did I hit the right button? I did. Awesome. Thank you. See you all next time. See you. All right. Gonna set the rate up. Oh, I just got. I finally got the. Uh, um, achievement for rating a hundred times. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean it doesn't mean anything. It's just oh, oh that was less. Level up in Twitch. Yeah. 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 So, thank you. Oh, you know what? It, it, it all it was is all it was is somehow Zoom now automatically sets the level of the mic for some crazy re reason. Oh, Tommy John Kelly was even on, man. I didn't. You were lurking all night. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Lots of love. All right, 40 going in. Five, four, three, two, Hi, one. Kiki. Here we go. Tommy, you gotta talk more, man. Good show, everyone. Yeah. Lots of lots good. of information. Yep. <sighs> yeah, I, I just to get back, I think we didn't even cover a lot of the lesser lesser known names of a circle of eight. I, did we even mention Otto? Yeah, I oh, mentioned yeah, him in the picture. We mentioned yeah. him a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. Um, we can always uh you're you're up. Good night everyone if you're still on here. See ya.